I did flip through the first several. One thing I'm noticing, and also looking at the Discord channel, one thing I'm noticing is that your five minutes are definitely getting a lot better. Your warm-ups, everybody's basically. The warm-ups are getting a lot better. They're getting more structural. They're getting more in the right spirit of what those are supposed to be. And um, that's great. So it looks like, you know, the harder this class is, people are getting it and they're improving. Uh, generally across the board, I've been, I've been seeing that. Hello. Uh, if you didn't know, I mean, there are these bumpers between the chapters that'll say, okay, now it's time to draw with Glenn. And sometimes those are decided based on the amount of time. So the education designers are looking at how long they anticipate the assignment being, what's the runtime on the videos. And then they're factoring that in when they give you the recommendations. But generally speaking, just my advice to you is none of that, none of that matters. You know, uh, really what matters is you learning. You should always draw along with the instructor, always, I, I think. There may be a few examples where that's not the case, but for the vast majority of new masters, of Con you're drawing along with him and you're taking notes. Like it, it's good to just do that like in a sketchbook. So just have a sketchbook handy. And then during the whatever the lecture is, you draw along. So you're getting the practice of following the instructor mark for mark. And if you have to pause it, that's, you know, that, that's fine. That's normal. Pause it. All right, what did he just say? Rewind it. What did she say? Zoom in, you know, replay it a couple of times. But that's like an app. That's, that's like active learning, right? It's a way to actively be not just sitting there and watching. Oh, I think I get it. Well, you know, you don't because when the assignment comes around and you try, you're like, wait, what was he? That doesn't make sense. But if you were doing the, the notes along with him, it's going to make that next step easier. Because at least you're, and also you're getting more training and going through the motions. You're learning how to draw properly. If you never shadow Glenn, then you're not really getting that physical movement of how it's supposed to move, right? You're not getting that. Watching it's not enough. It's like, I, you know, you can watch the Olympics every every four years and you're not going to be able to do any of the things the Olympians do. But watching is, is not enough. But following along with the teacher, you know, taking, you know, if Steve Houston writes something, you write it too. If he's shading the ball, you shade a ball. Do everything he does with the demos too. And it will take longer. So if the video is two hours, if you're drawing along, it might be two hours and 30 minutes or two hours and 40 minutes. So it will take longer to do it that way, but you'll get a lot more out of it. Um, if you're doing that. And then when you do the assignments, you're trying to channel that same physicality that you were using during the demo. So it's a good to, in the same session, maybe take a break, but you do the videos, you're following along with Glenn or with whoever the teacher is, and then you take a break, you know, come back, and then you're trying to like get in that same headspace to do the demos. That, that's really the idea. Um, just watching it and then later doing the assignment, there's too much of a disconnection. You've forgotten how Glenn moves. You've forgotten how it feels to do it like that. So that's my recommendation. Like it's not required. That's just my recommendation on how you should do this content. You really want to try to move like the teacher, you know, as if it was martial arts, you know, you want to move, you know, move your actual body, actually it's like shadow what they're doing and that'll help you learn faster doing it that way. Hi, um, Simon says, I struggled with the five minute head. I couldn't picture the head under the model's hair. I think there was a pretty big uh, progress with my one hour drawing, but the five minute heads. Try a uh, go to the the 3D area or go back to if you if you have access to the 3D area, you can draw like the skull from lots of different angles. So just draw skulls from different angles, right? The 3D viewer is, or if you have a real skull, I mean, you still have to suspend it. So if you have a real skull, that doesn't mean it's easy to draw from different angles because how do you get this thing? Um, what you could do if you have a hot glue gun. If you have a hot glue gun and you have some uh, like fishing line or some string, you could mount a few string points to the different parts of it. And then like a marionette sort of suspended on something. It could be like a ladder or something high. You could get it to sort of float in the directions or just use the 3D viewer. Use the 3D viewer. That's what it's designed for. But you want to draw, keep drawing the skull from different angles and you, your brain will start to, to get the idea. Same thing with the plain heads you can use. So... The key to that is you need to practice drawing from lots of different angles. You'll start to know what to expect. Like if the face is down, I'm expecting the cranium back here. If the face is up like this, I'm expecting cranium down here beneath the ear. And um, yeah, that doesn't come with the experience. It's also, um, there's also bald models, models that either have shaved their head, have lost their hair, or who have alopecia. There's an amazing model named um, Margaret uh, who has alopecia. And so she's got no hair anywhere on her body. And a lot of the angles you see without, it's just like a, you can see all the forms of the skull. So some of the image sets as well with bald models are fantastic or really short hair. So um, yeah, 
that you need to practice those angles. It's not going to come out of nowhere. You know, you need to build up that intuition. I had a really hard time with the horrible and I didn't submit them. Generally, what I'm seeing is improvement. You know, horrible's, uh, it's a negative term, but it's also a relative term. You know, are they horrible compared to what you could do five years ago? Are they horrible to what somebody would do if you went to a drawing class locally? Probably not. I think they're probably quite good. It's just, if you're comparing them to Glenn, you know. Yeah, the idea of the warm up is really to get a bigger, stronger sense of the actual spatial forms. That's the idea with the with the five minutes. That's so important because when you do a longer drawing, that you're relying on. That's how you can tell what the tilt is. That's how you can, you know. Um, and Glenn, without fail, anytime he's taught, I mean, this is for the last, I don't know how long he's been, he's probably been teaching his head classes for like 30, 30 years, you know. And in his head classes, that's always, it's always these short warm ups at the beginning of every class. Um, anyway, yeah, it, it's more practice. And also, you know, if I see something, I'll, I'll, uh, mention it. Um, if I see like a consistent misunderstanding, try to bring it up, you know, if we've got time. All right. So we got Cecilia here. Nice work, Cecilia. Looks like you did the Leonardo. Um, well, let's just, I mean, I can, I can spend a little, a little bit of attention on these, let me see if I can pull them up. Um, they're not very romantic, but these little five minutes are probably the most important part of this course because your overall sense of what the forms are doing are the, is the most important thing to whether your drawing is gonna be successful or not, right? So, okay, let's just look at this for a minute. You got the angle going back here. I mean, I think that's right. I think that's the right idea. So good job in like sort of spotting that. Uh, I think you did a good job there. You're bringing the head back down this way because if that's tilting this way, this needs to come down that way. I think you're doing a pretty good job of that. I think um, I'm gonna keep this as, as simple as I possibly can. So from this nodule of the mouth, right? Which is this round thing. Um, generally speaking, because of the masseter muscles, we are going to have some kind of plane that connects to the lateral outside corner of the um, eye socket, right? And so just start, um, and these are five minutes, right? So it's all within, it's all within uh, this time limit, right? But start really trying to see the simple structure of the eye sockets and, and start really trying to like, I'm really looking here. I'm really looking here at what the shapes and angles are for this, for this and this is a, there's a highlight here, but I'm really looking at what the shapes and angles are of, of, the, uh, of the cheekbone because whatever you study anatomically, we need to see how it fits into the real, fits into the real thing. And so here, you know, you got this, I think you, got, you, you noticed this well, this is well observed that the nose is attaching up here. Um, because of the angle and just because of, you know, Rajiv's nose, it's quite short, right? And when I told you, you don't need to focus on features, but since you've drawn them, right? Look, get high on him, this goes down. And probably this, need, this nodule needs to drop. So part of this is, is just, it's just the observation. And so, um, you know, Rajiv is not our template, our sort of template person, right? He has his own look. Look how full this is on Rajiv. And anything I do here, guess what? You gotta do it here. So if that's full and wide, then this needs to be full and wide. Right. Um, and then the eyebrows raised here, and it is actually it's moving out of our visibility. So um, notice those actual notice the actual shapes. Not I'm, I'm using your lay in here, but I think obviously we can always improve because in reality, I think if I'm going to try to correct the overall uh, proportions a little bit. It's really about like, okay, well, how low is this coming here, this form here? Okay, and then let's just say, let's just treat, so this is pretty vertical. 
right? And this is coming down. And then this is so short, right? And right now, like the first time I was just, I was just changing the shapes you actually had. But now let me, um, now let me sort of just reobserve and see if I'm getting, so if you see, if I keep, you might be able to tell if you see the webcam, how often I look, I look back when I'm observing. And it is um, quite a bit actually, right? And so I'm trying, I'm trying to see like the whole thing at once because yeah, we're, we're doing the construction and I can even use like an egg form here for now. We're doing the construction, but also like I want things to be in the right place and I want them to be the right size, right? So I'm just looking at like, where, where are things? Where are things at? And we're looking so far up at it. And right now, and I didn't do the ovoid construction, but that's how I would have started. I'm just sort of using what you have here. Okay. And then I'm thinking of this. What's going on with this? Masseter is down here. And where is that corner? Well, it's actually a pretty extreme angle, really. Corner's down here. And then under the masseter, we've got external clitomastoid. That's, and all of this is compressing here, right? It's turning around. And then that ear lobe is so dang low. You got that, actually. So I think that was well observed. Way down here. And then, like I was saying, and um, this is very much like a placement thing, right? I'm just trying to get all the... The puzzle piece is connected. Now look at the eye. The eye is sort of deep in the socket here. You see? It's deep, right? So deep, man. So how would I think structurally about it? The head? Well, something like this. I'm trying to learn as much as I can from, from Rajiv, right? Because he looks awesome. I think, I don't know who it was. Maybe Chris Legospi or somebody. Somebody said, I wish I looked like Rajiv. <laughs> One of my friends, one of my teacher friends, I don't know. Sorry, Chris, I don't mean to call you out there, but somebody, it might've been Charles actually, but somebody said, I wish I looked like Rajiv, man. Okay, and then look, this is the uh, larynx. We haven't learned the anatomy of the neck yet, but this is, it's, this is observational drawing what I'm doing. And then, I'm not going to spend this long on everybody, obviously, but I just want to kind of show you. And then zoom out for a minute, look at it, see if that feels, see if that, how that feels, right? And then if you had something like this that was truly working in terms of like, oh, the big structures are sort of, are sort of working and we can, and we can use uh, cross contour lines to help us understand, you know, But um, it's really, the head drawing is a success or a failure at, at this basic clay stage. This is where it's a success or failure. So when you're practicing the five minutes, you're practicing the stuff that matters most, the stuff that really counts. Do you see? And then obviously like how you draw the lips, how you handle the value, um, how many planes you're using, all of that stuff is very important, but it's not gonna make this any better or, or that's not that's a, that's a overstatement. It will make this look better, but it's fundamentally there's a you're you're limited. Your your how good your head drawing could possibly be is is in some way limited to how good this this stage is this this blocking. If you find them difficult to draw, just pay more close attention. Stop making assumptions. You know he's got a short nose and a full mouth barrel. He's got a sloping forehead. And um, all of these like unique things, he's still a handsome devil, but he's very off, off of the average template that you learn in like art school. So the ways in which you can capture those, and, you, and if you get those right, you can still make it look really strong, even though he's definitely not, you know, he doesn't have the, the, the classical profile, but that doesn't matter, right? This is even up too high, really. Once the brow ridge comes up, it's like, like that. So keep doing them structurally, but that that's sort of what that that's what I recommend you try to get out of it.
right? So I think more of this, I mean, you're doing it here. It's just, this is sort of like empty. This is sort of empty. So trying to get more form into it. And you're, you're too, you're too preoccupied to put it in Glenn's terminology. You're too preoccupied with the features. I want you to focus on the head, right? The head. This is head, this is head, this is head, this is head. All of this is head, not just this little eight. Does that make sense? Everybody, pretty much every student is, is too preoccupied with that stuff and too ignorant of everything else. I'm not saying you're ignorant. I'm just saying generally speaking, right? There's so much more to the head than that. That's like 5% of the head, right? So let's make these ones stronger. I hope that was helpful. You might be like, well, I don't know what these forms are. We'll go back to his like watermelon cutting stuff. Go back to his uh, anatomy stuff. Go back to his um, his planes conversation. That's what this is. This is just anatomy, simple construction and planes. They're just being interpreted in a way that's queuing off of a uh, regime. Okay. But nice job. You're all doing these better and better. Okay. You got your lane artist study. Here's the thing that I need, right? Oh, let me make this bigger. Okay. What I need is um, I need that basic construction, right? Hold on. Hold on. It's funny because I know we, we covered the ovoid, we talked about the ovoid, and then everybody underutilizes the most powerful tool they have. This is just really common. Um, give me one second here. I'm going to pull up. Especially during the old master's chapter. We should be really be thinking about this. I'm not going to get down my Fialetti book. I just want to show you. Uh, I'm going to bring over an image. I don't want to handle that book more than I have because it's like 500 years old. Just looking for the... Um, um, well, I think the Karachi one covers it too. But... Let me show this here, other one. I have so much stuff. Should really use the filters or just search, but I'm just scrolling. I think there's too much content just to do it like that. And Dewar did this too. I even showed uh, how the Hawkeye size were doing it as well. Guala Perfetta, that Perfetta, that is uh, the, um, that's the, uh, there we go. That's the Karachi version. This is, this is the book I have. It's just, this is photographed. Look, okay, here's what I want. I'm about to violate our own policy. This is what I want you guys to start with. Do you see this? I put it in the, the Discord chat. That's this is where we need to begin, right? And if you had done literally just that, just what I'm showing right now, if you had done that, I think um, the end result would have been would have come out more the way you want. So if we do, I mean, I do get some sense that you're looking at the angle of this. I do get that sense. But what's 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 wrong is that um, it's not making its way from here in the proper angle to this side. So it's not just this angle. It's not just that. 
It's how you get from the front plane to the side plane. I can't see the reference. Is there something I'm doing? Uh, go down to the chat, AF. The chat below. I just posted it in there. It's in. It's in the. Uh, it's in the new master's image area. I just. I just pasted. I just did a little like. I think most of us cannot. That's weird. You really. You guys couldn't see that reference. Oh, sorry. I don't know what happened. Where's Peter? I, I just posted it in the chat. So go down to the chat. Go down to the chat and look at what I just gave you. It's from uh, Theoletti. So here's here's what, here's the point. The point is that um, these angles are not enough to build a proper head. I'll post it again. Just look at the chat right now. I'll post it again for you. It's in this... It's in this uh, album. Okay. So in other words, what I'm telling you is that these angles for the features, the, these, these construction lines are not enough to draw the head well. Because why? Because they don't relate to the side plane. They don't relate to the side plane. And the ellipses are a brilliant way that artists that are better than all of us and Glenn have used it for thousands of years. Why? Because it brilliantly connects this front plane to the side plane. So if you had done that, you would have seen that how you would have seen the proper angle of the side plane. But because you didn't, and because this was covered in hair, you went into a generic three-quarter view here. So if you had, if you had like, for example, if we had taken the opening of the mouth, right, and we had come around, you would have seen that this really needs to come up here. So how that front plane, how that front um, side of the face relates to the side, the best way, and I haven't seen anybody with a better way than this, is to use these ellipses, okay? This is for everybody, right? So that, that's the main issue that I'm seeing is that we're not getting the, uh, the proper connection between the front and the side plane. Um, really nice, really nice work inside it, you know, besides that. But the other thing is that um, you've got the, you've got the, uh, the brow is low here, but it's lower than you, than you imagined it. So in reality, the eyes need to be covered more by the brow, right? So um, that's a natural thing to do, uh, Cecilia, where we're used to seeing the eyes not covered with the brows unless you're watching a Stanley Kubrick film and it's like Jack Nicholson. Uh, you're, you, it's not a typical angle. You're normally seeing the eyes under the brow. And so you're going into this sort of um, symbol and you're missing uh, the actual drawing, how the drawing's constructed. Okay, this is more cut off, I think. This comes up. This, I think you did a pretty good job on the nose. The mouth is closer. Look at how close up here it is, right? So, and also that mouth, the way he did it is built on more of an angle. And he's actually got the mouth open, right? So just, it's just, it's subtleties, right? But you want to pay attention to those. Um, also, the way you're building the cheekbone feels to me more like you're doing a three quarter and it's not getting the overall uh, tilt, which is going, it's not, it's not vertical, right? And so because that tilt is going back, that means that what would be, you know, this needs to rotate now. Well, how much does it rotate? Well, it rotates that much. So then now we got to have that rotation to it. And these aren't necessarily easy things to notice, but you should be thinking of that rotation, right? And then if we do this side, we got to come over on the other side. Well, you did a good job observing that, actually. I think you did a good job. I mean, I've got, I moved this over for you. So, okay, and now we're coming in like this. Do you see? So just some basic lay and stuff. I think that's uh, the main thing. In terms of how you handle the rendering and stuff, I think, you, I think you're doing a nice job. Um, it's a Leonardo, so Leonardo normally renders in one direction, right? He normally renders in one direction as opposed to wrapping the lines around the form. He only does that much later in his maturity with his uh, anatomy plates. So I think you... Um, I think you're getting, I think you're doing a good job on that. The problem is not really on the rendering side. I think it, it, it's carefully observed. It's really, it, it's basically laying. 
that that's the main thing I think you need to work on. Nice job though. It's really a beautiful drawing. Nice work, Cecilia. Okay, give a speed up. Dwayne, I just delete you, Dwayne. All right, um, these are getting better, right? Like what I just did for my demo for the Rajiv, I see a lot of the same thinking here. It's just, you need to pay more attention to this stuff, but nice job on this one. You know, you're still fighting your linear habits. And I noticed that if your faces are more side on or front on, you go back into your old old habits. But I think it's a pretty good, I think it's pretty good thinking. You're, you're thinking in the right kind of a way. Um, Spend more time getting the basic structure rather than getting into little planes. But hey, this is, these are five minutes you're experimenting. And look, if we're gonna drop the head down, you know, the eyes are gonna, let's find it. The eyes are gonna drop uh, here, right? Machine? Is there another regime that's, or maybe this? Okay. Let's just, let me just point that out for you. Let me make sure I can be seen too. I might need to keep up the chat so I make sure I'm in frame. Yeah, I'm not in frame. Let me, let me actually do this. Let me just zoom out a bit. What I'll do, what I probably should do since Peter's not here, I should probably just uh, keep the, uh, I can see myself here and then I'll switch over to the chat. Okay, so if we're dropping, right, we're dropping down this way, right? Because the chin is being lowered. Okay, so this is going to drop more than you even have. Right, that it's going to drop. So what does that mean? It's overlapping. I mean, you got the eye here. So all that stuff is really high up. You see. So then we're going to lose length on the nose because the nose is actually somewhere being overlapped by the brow up here. So I think you, I think you observed that all right. Although the no, the wings of the nose are going to be higher, right? Because everything is being. This is going to overlap. This is going to overlap. Did you see this? It's like stairs. So everything that everything that is um, lower is going to be pushing back up, right? And now I think you have too much too much uh, distance between the mouth. And it can help to actually think of some of these positive shapes here. Like you can use the sort of a nasal labial furrows rather than the actual line of the mouth if it's helpful to you, right? And then this his his uh, masseter is quite um, recessed, so it's almost like hollow in here. And then you've got this strong cheekbone on the side here. So overall, what I think is that you need more overlapping, you need more of the stair stepping effect in your construction. But you, I think the general idea is good. And because look, if I go from here to the eyes, go from here to the eyes. And then I'm saying, okay, maybe that's because it's it's going back in space, right? So it's actually uh, it's getting compressed. But when I figure out where this is, that this is sort of on a front plane here. So this part where I'm trying to figure out where the top of the head is, I'm not done yet, right? Well, what do you mean? Well, I have to go back, boop, 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 and then actually find the high point of the skull. Does that make sense? I'm not done yet because this is not on the wrong plane. It's not up here. It's back here. Right? This is where I want to be. So I gotta, I'll bet you most of you are not doing that. Hopefully you were just paying attention, right? So I'm trying to figure out why well, I can't see because the hair's there, where's really the top of the head. I have to I have to come up. And if this line is really, like let's just think of it as, as a plane, right? If it's going back in space. If it, the more this compresses, the lower this is gonna, the lower the midline is going to be. So depending on how, the, it depends on obviously uh, how much for shortening there is, but I actually, if anything, from here to here, this is the eyes, right? I'm doubling it. It's actually gonna be a little higher than that. It's not gonna be exactly e equidistant. Why? Because of perspective. So what I would do here, if, th if this is the eyes and this is here, I probably would add maybe as much as, maybe as much as that much. And then I have to go back in space so maybe it's a little higher than I did in my initial block in, right? So the more it tips down, so if I have a plane here and it has a certain proportion, right? And this is it straight on, right? So let's say that this is the top of the head. Boop, 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 boop. That's the eyes, right? That's the bottom. Well, 
if I were to tilt this plane back into space and it's got for shortening, let's see what happens. Look, it's bigger here than here. Not by a huge amount or anything. Like don't you don't have to you don't you don't have to go nuts on this. But this is now longer than this. And if I were to tilt it even more extremely, it would be more extreme. So two two points I want to make here. One, all these proportional measurements are going to change depending on the perspective. That's that's the first point. Uh, let me turn on the volume. I'm peaking my audio. That's the first point. The second point is even once we calculate this properly, chin, level of the eyes. Top of the head. The top of the head's not out here. It's got to come back into space. That's where the top of the head is. Let me know if any of that doesn't make sense. Because um, that, that will creep into your drawings and cause you problems. Overall, nice thinking on the, the five minutes. Let me pull up the reference for this. I'll go back to the chat right now and see. Image of the head mold. Okay, yeah, I posted it in the chat, but I was showing it on screen, but I didn't have Peter to help me. So I don't know if uh, when I was showing it on screen, you could see it. I have no way of knowing that. Yeah, I'm just trying to do the best I can with just me right now. Okay, it looks like, what are you doing here? Is this a Bernini or a Rembrandt? Look, a lot of portraits of the masters, they're depicted with Bozzetti because that was their working method. Was, was the Bozzetti important to them, like I talked about? Well, it's in all their portraits. What do you think? If you're a lawyer, in your portrait, you have your hand on the like, uh, laws, paperwork. And if you're an artist, you have your you hold a Bozzetti. Just trying to find what you were actually drawing here. Oh, here we go. It's down here. It's just small. All right, Dwayne, so tilt of the head's a little off to begin with, right? Because you have him chin down, but he's actually, look, you have it more, the axis of your head looks more like this. The axis of his head is more like this, right? But how'd you miss that? Well, you were looking at contour, right? And so you know what to expect in the contour. So you have your cheekbone coming out, you know we got to get down to the chin, right? And that is happening. It's just, this is the problem with copying is that um, you, you miss the big stuff here. So look, yeah, it is doing that. But look, it's doing more like this. Do you see? So when we copy a contour, when we copy a contour, uh, not only are we using what we expect to see, but we're also we're we're very sensitive to these changes and we lose sight of the big thing that's exactly what happened here this is these are the dangers of copying um you need to look for that overall axis first if you would have done the if you would have done an ellipse for the brows that come down to the ear and an ellipse to the nose come down you would have related this side of the head better to the to the front of it the, the egg thing is not just like a little nerdy thing that uh, Glenn and I talk about. It's It was used for hundreds of years because it worked better. If we don't do it, um, we're missing out on, on the advantages of that. So the overall angle of the head is, is not correct. That's the main issue. Um, once The other thing is that, I mean, we're not into rendering yet, but your halftones are way too dark. So if you're, think about the uh, light side versus the shadow side, let's just take a minute to, to, to do that. And this goes back to, this is basic drawing. You know, this is, um, beginner's guide stuff, you know, that uh, Drawing Foundations 1 course stuff. But if we're separating the light side from the shadow side, right? It's a cast shadow here. And you always need to know if you're drawing a cast shadow or not. Okay, so it's cast shadow. And we'll talk about, we're gonna deal with this next week, actually, in this course more but I want to give you an idea. Okay. 
Light side, shadow side, right? This is the shadow side. Shadow sides always need to be neon green. Okay. Once we have the light side and the shadow side, I'm, just, I'm not fixing your construction. I'm just trying to illustrate something. Anything on the light side, any darks on the light side need to be much lighter at, than the things in the shadow side. So this is just a, it's a, um, it's a drawing fundamentals thing. So this is a, this are, these are, this is a mistake. You're, you're creating muddy or a dirty light side. Um, the reason why has to, the reason why that is, is because um, like, I don't know, I, I'll talk about this next week. I'll talk about light and shadow next week. Um, one issue with the the way you're actually doing the drawing the line because you're using a lot of straights. Look, I can see it right there. You're using a lot of straight lines, which tells me that you probably have more of an academic training, right? And these straights, there's nothing like wrong with them fundamentally, but they flatten out the form. And uh, that's why the only time Glenn will really use the straights is if he's literally trying to just create a flat field of darkness, right? Leonardo uses straight lines, but he does it completely differently. You, you should be using curved lines to describe the form, I think. That's gonna help you think of it. Why? Because all the surfaces are curved, right? So um, this is a curve. This comes up and it's curved, comes over and then it turns and that's a curve. And then it comes up onto the hair and that comes over this part and it goes away. It's all curves. You can't, you can't find any straight lines. You might say, oh, well, the jaw's straight. Here, well, is it? Look carefully. Look, put the sunken in, full. And then we can actually see it coming here. It comes down and it's bulging over the larynx. There's no straight lines on the on the on the, the head. So you should try to use the use the language of nature. If, na if the head's curved, use curved lines to describe it. I think that'll help. I think that these straight lines are flattening things out. So overall, nice work. You know, I think you did a really good job. And also I'm seeing a lot of improvement, especially in the short poses. Good work, Dwayne. Andy, what is the correct way to figure out the axis? Okay, so I talked about that in week one, um, but the correct way, like, do you mean the technically the most accurate way I, I can think of, or do you mean what's a practical way? Because a practical way is you're looking at all of the evidence and you're coming up with a with a theory of what the you're looking at all the evidence and you're coming up with a theory. That's the most practical way you're going to use. But realistically, let me see if I have a reference image somewhere. Hold on. I know I'm on. I'm not skipping you, Andy. I'm just trying to trying to find if somebody includes. Okay. Practically speaking, or uh, technically speaking, if we wanted to get more technical with the construction, I recommend you use the Frankfurt plane. So. It's the lowest point here. Well, it, it technically is queuing off of the actual external auditory meatus, right? But realistically for us, because we often can't make out where that is, we actually are gonna take, sorry, the highest point of the ear hole. So that's gonna be somewhere in here, right? So if I were to, I'm not gonna get too into the anatomy here, but it's basically the high point of the ear hole. And then we look at the lowest point of the eye socket. And you can see that because you've got this, these fatty, this, this fatty area tends to accumulate here. And the lowest point is gonna be on the outside. So basically we're moving from this to this. This is called porion. So we need to get from this point to this point. And what, what does that achieve if we actually get that? Well, that's our horizontal. That's our horizontal. So, if the head is in the natural neutral position. So if this angle is perfectly horizontal, then we might be in a, just a, a front view, a side view, a, a straight view. If this angle is anything but horizontal, then we know we're, we're, we're tilting. But this essentially is a side plane. So um, it's not gonna be the same as the axis across the features, right? So if I take the lowest point, let's say, let's just do like the high point of the eyelids there. Let's do maybe the low point of the brows right here. Let's do like the corners of the mouth and then maybe um, underneath the wing of the nose. Okay, and then let's connect these. Boop, 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 boop. 
boop, 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 boop. Yeah, I have to make stupid sounds. Okay, so this is the front plane now. You see? And it's a photograph too, so it's not gonna be perfect. And it's a sculpture, so there's gonna the possibility for human error, although it's freaking Bernini, so. Okay, so now we've got our front plane and our side plane, right? Now, we, I mean, at this point, that's more than enough information to find the ellipse. But what does this say? Are we looking up at the head? Or are we level with the head? Or are we looking down on the head? I'll give you guys time to answer based on what we just observed here. Is this an upshot? Are we looking up? Is it a downshot or are we level? Think about that for a minute and tell me in the chat. Now, if I were to, let's say, let's forget about, um, let's forget about big convergences. The heads aren't that large. And in most cases, we're not getting big convergences. But let's say I, I went back this way in space. And then let's say the back edge, I'm gonna clone this too. And then let's say the back edge is like that. Okay. And now I'm going to um, ghost that down and I'm going to draw the plane. I'm gonna draw the plane now. So this is gonna be like a section sort of big on my screen right now. Okay. And I'm gonna shade it in. We're looking up at it. So if this was a box, Looking up at it. But I mean, this makes it look like we're looking down. So let me just hide that. You see? That's what we're doing mentally. Now, I just did it really technically. You might say, well, Glenn never got as technical as that. But that's essentially what we're doing. Now, can you do that intuitively? Yeah. Well, how? Well, the ellipses on the damn egg. Damn it, the quote, Ray. How do we do that complicated thing I just did quickly and easily? Well, you can just you can just tell. You can see it. That's how we do it quickly. This little section of an ellipse, as rough as it is, is like that down plane that we just deleted. That's that's the point. That's what the egg is giving you. Your other teachers might not talk about it or other books and stuff you saw, um, probably because they don't know, they don't understand. And it's probably, if you look, look, if I, if I, if I look at professional work by artists, this stuff looks okay, this looks okay. This is just garbage back here because they don't know how to connect the side plane and the front plane because they didn't study their Leonardo, they didn't study their Raphael. So I'm, I'm trying to, and Glenn, we're trying to give you a better method a method to do better head drawings than other artists do. That's what we're trying to do. And it's funny how simple it seems, but that's what the egg is. Okay. We go back to Andy. That if anything about that didn't make sense, please ask. If you don't understand it, are you're going to be limited? You have to you have to understand it to to do good head drawings. Okay. Um, these are definitely getting more structural, Andy. I appreciate it. Um, let's look at the upshot real quick. Look at how much this is dropping, actually. Like these ears are really dropping. So what that says is that we look at quite a strong upshot, which I think you have. I think maybe you have that over too far. Okay. 
And once I have these ellipses, these green ellipses, I just mirror them with everything else I'm doing. The top of the chin, I'm mirroring the green lines. Bottom of the chin, I'm mirroring the green lines. Okay, where's the jaw? It's back here. Where is it on the other side? You see how these, those green ellipses are what all the construction is based off of. You can do it straight like Glenn. Technically, it drops. So it'll look a little more accurate if you drop that. Okay, let's just look at, uh, let's just look at what we see, right? So you have the right idea. You have the right idea, but um, more, right? Because I don't think we want to have a lip if the construction of the head is this simple. It's just a little too simple. So what I'd rather see, do you see this construction that I'm, I'm showing that you did? If you've only got this much information, I think the next step is to add more structural information. It's not to, you don't want to stick a nose and a mouth on this. Glenn can do it because Glenn's a master. He can do it because he has all this other information. But for you, for all of us, we want more structure. We want more structure. So this is good thinking. Take that to another level. Add more information structurally to this before you do the features. Oh, the, here we go. Maybe I'll put it on this side so it's in frame. Okay, nice work. Let's look at your uh, study here. Hey. Okay. Axis is off. Yours is more like this. His is more like straight. Um, so yours is tilting back this way too much. Should be more upright. Oops, on the wrong layer up here. So the overall axis is wrong. Does yours have a good, uh, does yours feel three dimensional? I'm gonna make an adjustment here. I'm gonna make this actually, I'm gonna zoom it out a little bit so we can see more. I'm basically gonna show everything within the confines of my canvas area. Just more like this. All right, I think that's better. It'll make some of the drawings a little smaller, which is not what we want, but on the other hand, I can zoom in a little more comfortably. Okay. So, um, does it feel 3D? Well, actually it does. It feels pretty 3D. Like what you're doing here is is uh, nice. I think it's too dark, right? Because these are half tones, but again, we'll get into that later. You're making that feel very round. I think that's good thinking. You know, you're sort of showing that this step down here is crossing into the socket, which I think is good. That's obviously what Glenn is, has been talking about. So one thing you're not really seeming to get that is obviously at least is that, well, first of all, there is also um, a plane here. There's a plane here and this is going from more of a frontal plane back. Um, that'd be a very subtle thing, but that's something you could get. But what you need to uh, keep in mind is that it's narrower here so that this stuff here on the sides, it's not really like, um, and Glenn may diagram it like this, but it's not really like a round form and then a completely flat plane here with this interruption here. So this is not like straight, round, straight. This is not straight more or less. And then it's not really like that. The way it really is, is um, it's more that this is round and then this is all going, like this is all plane facing this way. So this is dropping, right? So try to get more of that feeling of dropping here from here, dropping, right? So th this stuff is really like this. Does that make sense? That'll help. If you don't do it, then the result is you get a forehead which is too wide and too flat, which is what, what happened there. Um, I like what I like a lot of how you're handling the cheekbones. The only thing though is that I'm not getting a sense that this is like more facing up here. These are more up planes, and it looks to me like you're just you're cutting into them with the shadow, and you're trying to make it round, but it feels overall kind of flat. So um, if this is like a ledge, and then it's stepping down here, right? This is like a ledge, and we do have like these different pockets of fatty tissue 
But overall, oops, overall though, um, and also look at how this relates to this. Okay, so we're, we're sort of carving this up with shadow, and this is going back into space. But look, these are like the front and down planes there and there. That being said, even though there's all this stuff that's happening in here, overall, this is like a upward facing kind of a plane. And so you wanna keep those values light, but you wanna keep that in your head, that overall, this is up. That's why sometimes you'll see old masters, and this is something I do a lot, just using like an egg form in here as like a stand-in. And the reason why is that with the egg form, it's pretty obvious. Like let's, let's just think of this as an egg here, right? If it's an egg and then we have light that's coming from the front and above, then what would how would we expect to render that egg? Something like this, right? And it's red, it doesn't really look like, but do you see this? And then that's being interrupted by this cascade of fat, fat avalanche, right? But you wanna see this round. You hear someone say, oh, the apples of your cheeks, the rosy apples of your cheeks. I want you to think of that as round because if you thought of it as round, you it wouldn't have felt so, like this actually, even though you're doing so much good work, it still feels flat. And I think it's because you're not thinking of the up plane. Um, this is subtle, but you don't wanna make this different value, different plane, right? You don't wanna make this plane and this plane seem the same because they're not, right? This is actually more of an up facing plane. This is, should be getting tone because it's like a ramp. Right? It's like ramp and then a road. So if you're driving our car, up in the air. Right? But the way you've drawn it, it would just be like, it's like this is all one plane off a cliff. So you got the wrong physics. Turn the planes. Nice work, nice work overall. Good to get good 3D thinking. You can just keep pushing it. Debbie. Okay, so here I feel like you got the you got the the axis a little bit better. Like I do feel like this is turning the right way, right? The problem is though that okay, we're looking at it from above, so that means that this section, the head, should be larger than the face because this is closer to us. This is further away. So I, the what what's and you know what like Leonardo is pushing it right. He has that same problem in his drawing. So Leonardo is also making this mistake or he's making this choice. But you know we got to mention it right. It's the it's the big thing. So okay. look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold my skull at a similar act. This is not you know it's not it's not the same person or anything. But if I hold this skull at the same angle as what you're doing, I'm getting something like this. And then this sort of change of plane from the forehead in the front to where it goes back becomes more dominant. And overall, I'm getting more mass here. Just looking, I'm literally just like observationally sketching this out right now. And then it becomes more flat. And then we get the mass here. This is where the cheekbone is coming out. And then and forward. So if you do have a skull, or again, using the New Masters Academy library, try turning the skull the same angle as what you're drawing. And what you're going to see is, oh, wow, this gets very big from this angle. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to open up the chat again. So other than that, um, I think there's a lot, a lot that's working really nicely here. Nice, nice study. I mean, you didn't get as much into the rendering. Uh, looks like you were more trying to, you made this mistake though, because look, this is what the other student that I was talking about did before you. That is a upright, but we're not upright, right? Right, right? We're not upright. This whole thing is at an angle. Do you see that? So this stuff, Pay more attention to the things way uh, the ways things are angled. Okay. Nice work, Debbie. Ambrin, 
Nice to see you. Okay. Thanks for including the images. Even did a warm up that you shared. Okay, so you know I can see in your warm up, um, especially that you are thinking of this as an egg, right? You are thinking of it as an egg. I think you're thinking of this. I think you're thinking of that. So that's a good start, right? Everything is curving. Everything is curving. That that's a good start for this Gru's study. Um, let me just do and move this over a little bit so that it's easier for us to see. Gruge is one of the hardest drafts, drafts people to study from. He's very, very tricky, tricky to work from, pretty advanced stuff overall, just like the tonal. Uh, he also exaggerates some construction stuff. Like in particular, he's exaggerating the foreshortening on the far side. Because look, if we if we run a, an ellipse through these eyes, look how fast it dies off. Pew! So that's an exaggeration. That's an intentional application of the uh, of the techniques. So that exaggeration can make it a little hard because we're sort of like trying to keep it a little more basic. Um, yeah, so without talking about values, here's here's some of the, the flowing lines that I want to focus on here. So look, this is turning a corner. We need to feel that turn more, okay? This is going in just the way Glenn talks about. Then this is in this is in light. And then as we get to the other side here, it's really, it's really like shrinking everything. So this curve here is there. And then this side of the bone on this side is here. Okay, let's make our way down. It's sort of like in that image with Rajiv, this is really up, up facing and then the nose is actually quite vertical when you get here. And then you feel the roundness here. I think you might've missed this. You got the wrong shape of the nostrils. If you're going to draw nostrils, pay more attention to the shape of them. And then this is going back into space. So this is around here. And then we get down to the mouth, the opening of the mouth. I'm going to do the lower the lower uh, lip. It's round. And then it's being overlapped on this side by the lower lip. Why is it being overlapped by the lower lip? Well, we're looking, it's an upshot. This needs to be more this way. Okay. Again, I mean, everything we're doing is following the ellipse angle, right? Everything we're doing is informed by that. You can't draw anything without thinking of how it relates to those ellipses. You're going to flatten them out. Okay. And then I think this is going to be more, I think you got the jaw in too much. I think it's more like this on this side. And then, okay, I, I drew it on one side. I got to draw it on the other. Where is it on the other side? Visualize it. Okay. So it is. Here, right? I think this stuff is a little more extreme. I think this is coming out more the way he did it and then coming down and then you get the roundness. Okay, where is this on the other side? Okay, I'm going from outside the eye socket and I'm coming towards the mouth. Going from outside the eye socket and I'm coming towards the mouth, okay? Keep my advice. Don't draw anything on one side without immediately flipping over and drawing on the other side. What you might find is, oh, I had that too high. So one side can correct the other side, right? Okay, and then we are making our way around here. You know, this is the roundness of the mouth. Um, this plane you got here, I think you that was pretty well observed. I think you, you kind of uh, are not getting the flow of the uh, the orbit though, or at least you're you're getting some of it, but. I think you're missing some of this depth, right? This is pretty low. This is pretty flat. I think you may have it too tall. You know, it's it's um. I mean, maybe maybe you had somewhere between what you had and what I just did here. All right, this is that. Just like with Rajiv, right? That's compressing because our head's going back, pushing into the SEM, right? I think this even needs to come higher the way he's done it. So it needs to come higher, all of this, because he's exaggerating, just like the Lacuan sculpture. Look at that sculpture. And then look, this bonnet, 
It's just an accessory, but it needs to exaggerate these curves, right? The bonnet needs to play against the curves that we've already got. So think of the drapery a little bit more in terms of the gesture. You see what I mean? It's, ex it's accentuating what you have here. I think the placement of the eye needs to come a little bit this way maybe, but yeah, you're doing the right thing. I'm just trying to sort of help you Help you push it even a little more in the right direction. I think the eye, I mean, the mouth might need to come up. But that's the thinking, right? We're just moving around and we're just carving it up. Okay, nice work. Series of tad drawing. Okay. Um, proportions, uh, when you're going with your fat, when you're going quickly, it's very obvious your proportions are suffering. The face is way too large relative to what you're implying for the head. That'll, that'll come with, with time, but, um, also looks like you're struggling to think sometimes in 3d, like here, this just looks like a distorted head. You know what I mean? It's not actually feeling that roundness here's better. But do the ovoid and do the ellipses like I talked about first. All you're doing here is a round thing, and then you're dropping a jaw off of it. Oops. Look. And that's another good thing about the five minutes is I can see how you're really working. And hide from me. Look. That's what you're doing here. This is more like Loomis, right? You're not, you're not using an ovoid form. Same thing here. You see, that's not working. It's not working. Let's do it more than ovoid. Let me find one that you did here, and then I'll show you how you could have started it in a different way. I mean, I have these demos in week, uh, I think in week two that I showed you. You can go back and watch those, but okay. Look, from the brow, we have to go up to get to the ear, right? And then once, once I've sort of decided what that is, I can do that with the nose too, right? And then I'm looking at the real angle here. I'm like, oh, my chin needs to come over a little bit. And I'm sort of looking at the real shape here. It's not totally different from what you're doing, but I need to get this thing to be round. A little more like that. And then as Gwen talks about, then we can carve it up, right? There's a lot of overlap happening. How, how close does this nose get to the side here? Gwen likes to bring this down too. You know, it likes to plane that off. And how much is this overlapping this stuff? Very wide on him. So however you're going to uh, carve this up after you start, Gwen talks about the bottom of the orbit. You see, a little more, start with that ovoid. Think about where the top of the head is. And also I didn't do it here, but look, we need to think about the proportions, right? So, all right, again, if this was a, well, I won't do that right now. I did with them, I'll keep it simpler here. Cause what you could do is you could actually turn this into a plane and then find that X, right? but just make the top part, don't make it perfectly halfway, make the top part a little, a little taller and then bring this back into space. Okay, those are our eyes. This is the top of the head. That's the chin. Now, if that's correct, then the eyes need to come lower and you can just correct what you already had. Like, okay, maybe the eyes are a bit lower than what I had. And then maybe that comes a bit lower and that's gonna give more room for the cranium. Remember I'm always saying, more cranium, more cranium, more cranium. It's so easy to, to get the estimation off, right? Or it could be that the, the top of the head needs to come up. That'd be another way to fix it, right? So we could do the other thing where we say, all right, I'm just gonna make this taller. So now this is it. And then if I chop that in half, then the eyes are in the right spot, but I need to maybe make this bigger up here, right? And then Glenn talks about all this stuff, right? He talks about, look, that, that plane there. So, 
a little bit less, like you're drawing, look, you're drawing the different parts of the nose. And this is a five minute study. You're drawing parts of, you're drawing the lips. It's like, this stuff is what matters, right? Um, hope that helps. And it's the same, it's kind of the same thing. It's the same thing again and again. Okay, it looks like you did two of these. I'm not sure, I'm not sure which one. Maybe one of them was uh, Glenn's demos. I don't actually remember which is which, but let's find one of these at least. This looks like a terracotta by Bernini in a sketch. I think this is for um, St. Lorenzo. Well, one thing I appreciate here is that you seem to have gotten the head, the axis of the head pretty close, right? Because it would have been very easy to like stand it up straight. So you didn't, you didn't make, you didn't fall into that trap. Um, does it feel 3D? It feels pretty three-dimensional actually. The way, I think it's definitely like over-modeled for sure. And I think there's too many straights that you cut off and then you've never turned them into organics. Here's what I mean. What I mean is that there's too much of this straight line construction and you could have maybe got away with it and I wouldn't have commented or noticed it if you went and turned those into curves, but you didn't. So the big problem here is that although I feel like it's, it's pretty 3D, you're not using the language of curvature, you're using the language of straights. So um, you, you're gonna, um, it's going to, I mean, look at it overall compared to this. This is Bernini, you know, one of the greatest artists that ever lived. This is a complete masterpiece. This has got a lot of nice things that you see here, but it's choppy. It's choppy. It's like somebody carved it with a with a knife. And that's a it's just a different aesthetic. You know, you're missing things by doing it like that. So is there a huge difference conceptually? Well, it's more of an application thing. Let me just show you. Look, curve. This comes up. This is a sketch, right? This is not a not totally resolved. Look, look at the curves. I'm not, I'm not actually, at least I'm not intentionally exaggerating. This is, this is what he's doing, how he's designing. See, every line I make is a curve. This is like low cone. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, actually. Glenn says leave a space there. He did. That's good. This we're looking at an upshot, so the lower lid is going to be flatter. But look, don't even hit that hard at all. Look at how the values actually work. You want to be very uh, soft there. Look, round. I said this is like an egg. Can you see it now? A little more clearly. This is wider. This this bump of the nose. This is where the nasal bone ends and the cartilages begin. It's often a bump, and then it gets narrower. But it's also coming towards us, so it's sort of complicated because you have things that are getting narrower, but they're also coming towards us, and so you have to sort of just um, be aware of it. You see. See the difference? Go do do some of the lessons from my from my uh, Master Monday, where we, we we do these we do these kinds of studies. Go to the ones of the Fialetti eyes. You'll you'll get the sense, right? Nature is curved. We draw with curves. Now, can you can you start with straight lines and kind of like curve it up? Well, I mean, in a way, that's what I'm doing right now. Like if you have a straight line construction, but I, I think the straight line construction is it's important for accuracy. It's important when you're first learning. It's also a crutch, man, and it sucks, and you should discard it. You know, start drawing masterfully. Curves are masterful. Straight lines are like training wheels. Get rid of the training wheels. Pop a wheelie. <laughs> Drive off a nose ramp. Fly through the air. Nice job, Peter. Okay. I think these five minutes are, they're more three-dimensional and constructed, which I like. Who is this, Maggie? The problem is it's 
the construct you're doing the Loomis construction. The Loomis construction creates the wrong head shapes a little bit. So I'm happy that you're doing uh, construction. But look, the Loomis creates these like here's here's a here's a Loomis construction the way I see it the way they look to me. They look like these light bulbs. They look like these light bulbs. So even though I know you're supposed to cut off the edge, but this is too round. And the cranium's not, it's not a sphere. Look at it. It's not even close to a sphere, right? So it just comes up with the wrong shape. And then this faceplate, this like wedging faceplate, it only makes sense if you're drawing like Superman or Batman. Like it's only a very specific person that that describes well. For most people, it's a bad description. So I do like that you are um, constructing, but I just wish you would use a, a, um, more Glenn's construction or just more of the traditional construction. You know, it's a better construction. You're going to get better drawings if you use that. So I would say go back to week one and 3D thinking, yes. Lewis construction, no. I mean, look, look at what you've done here. This is a perfect example. Right? I don't know exactly how you did this, but this is very round and this is very flat. And this is this big wedge that comes out, right? If that's not, it doesn't look like, it doesn't look like what Bernini's doing, right? So we talked about this before, but if you'd use an egg construction, an ovoid construction, um, you might have gotten the the angle of the head better. And you probably would have also gotten the, um, the front plane relationship to the side plane a little bit better. And then you would have had these ellipses to remind you to play against as you did all the rest of the construction. Like, oh, this nose comes forward. So it's coming off of that, coming forward. Um, oh yeah, I got to wrap this around, right? You didn't wrap this side around enough. It, it's It looks more... Like it's all just built on, on these um, straight lines. So better construction is gonna give you a better result. That being said, again, this is feeling pretty 3D and I think you're doing a lot of things right. So, um, I mean, the, the thing you got wrong is this doesn't look as much like an upshot. This looks like a three quarter upshot mix together, right? So, um, all right, let's try. Yeah, it's just not getting enough of that. So axis, the actual tilt of the head, the basic beginning of the construction, which I can see here, which I, I appreciate you showed that. And this looks more Gokulian. So, okay, I'm gonna try to think about, I'm going to try to think about this ellipse. And he's, he's older, right? So that lobe is gonna grow more, but then this ellipse, I'm gonna try to think of these, right? I'm not forgetting that for a second, okay? Wedging, lifting, coming down, enough, right? Coming down, turning away this way. I'm not forgetting that ellipse. Coming up, this is jutting out into space, but it's dropping significantly back here. This is coming around the way Glenn talked about it. This is coming around, okay? This is, as Glenn talks about dropping, look, you got this too high, right? This is, this is going, this is, the stuff is basically going back into space. So just by going through that thinking already, I've already stumbled across a, a positioning problem, right? Okay, this is coming forward. And then we've got the tip. This is, Dropping. This is round. This is round. Yes, we've got this sort of uh, furrowing of the brow, but overall, it needs to be, we need to push these sides back this way. Okay? The ellipses, when I'm drawing ahead from any angle, I, ha I have to keep reminding myself of these ellipses for every feature to look correct. That's why the ellipses have to be simple. If it was something complicated, you can't keep it in your mind, right? So every, every feature you draw, like let's exaggerate it. The eye is gonna be like, 
is going to be really flat here, and it's going to be really curved this way. And we're going to see a lot of this, I'm exaggerating, a lot of the underplane. And then as it goes back, it's going to be really short because it's going back into space. And then this opening of the brow is going to be really tall. So that exaggeration allows you to draw the features in perspective, but you have to keep reminding it. If you don't have any of that ovoid construction and all you have is, if what you have is this, right? If you had a, a ball and then you dropped, and yeah, okay, we're cutting the side off. And then you're dropping this face plate. And then you did some horizontal or horizontal in the neutral position lines. And then you just start drawing. It's not enough. Do you see? It's actually less information. And if you don't have that curve to like bend everything, well, how are you going to get these things coming up, right? It's not enough construction. Anyway, that came off like a harsher critique than I meant to because I wanted to make some general points, but really good job, Maggie. It is feeling very 3D. I, I, like, I, like, I like what I'm seeing. Nice work. I just wanted to use that sort of as an excuse, I guess, to talk about some of the other issues I see, you know, generally. Okay, this looks like, I don't know, maybe a Parmigianino. I'm not sure. Uh, some good stuff happening with these, like that. Pretty damn 3D, pretty 3D, although you're not really sure about what these shapes are, I can see. So you should study the skull, that'll help. Pretty 3D, um, you're not drawing any of this. So you need to study skulls because um, you need more information about the cranium. And you also need to learn more about the shapes of the orbits and the cheekbones, but it's looking more 3D, you know? I mean, I don't think you should be doing brows quite that early, you know? And you're still mostly concerned with this stuff and this is much less knowledgeable for you, which is normal, but keep flushing that in, but you are thinking three-dimensional, you're doing the right kind of a thing. I think your Parmigianino study is actually quite um, quite sensitive. Um, you got, the, you got the, the major construction wrong. I know, it's so boring. I wish I had a better, I wish I had better news, but it's like, this is, okay. All right, look. So I'm noticing, there's this axis and then it's turning, right? So the ellipse is something like this. And then that means that the eyes are gonna be doing the same thing and the nose is gonna be doing the same thing and then the mouth is gonna be doing the same thing, right? So if I just get that major ellipse axis before I even do the egg, it is sort of swinging back this way, which is what we need it to do, right? More than what you're doing, right? And so also, as I round this off, you're missing all of this. So, and then once we have that working, then what we do is we start carving it up. That's the approach. So axis is off, but let's forget about that for a minute. All right, see you next time. No dread tip. I don't really know. Um, what I like is that you're building this out of soft, simple forms. With Parmigianino, it's like impossible to do it any other way. It's so obvious, but you are getting it. So um, as we run our lines over here, we're feeling a roundness here, and you're doing that. This eyebrow starts up high, and then it drops low. I don't think you shaped that as well as you could have, but generally you got the right idea, and you're even pulling the lines this way. Now, one thing you missed here is that this is also turning away, right? And then this needs to be higher and drop more, you see? And then this would be like this. And then same thing here, the underside of this has got tone. And then as it sort of turns into the light, it opens up. This is all quite light. This is gonna come down here. Look, focus more on the core shadow first. Treat the core shadow as importantly as this line underneath that you have that's separating the, the actual limits of the nose. Treat the core shadow with a little more um, um, care. And this is all passing into tone, right? But I think overall you got the right idea here. Maybe the angle of your rendering is a little, a little off, which is which that was just a mistake that started at the very beginning. Look, just like we turn in here. We turn in here and then we come up higher. How close are we getting? Well, he's sort of exaggerating the dipping here, the dipping away of the lower head. He's exaggerating that. But look, this needs to be low. 
on that side. And then, yes, this has got a curve this way, but we can't go nuts with it because we're also looking up. And then um, if we, if we are getting the nose, which we've seen in this kind of position several times so far, right? If we get the nose and we get this, this needs to drop more. Here, here, less forehead. We're looking up, right? The forehead is gonna be um, shrunk and I don't think you're doing it quite enough. All right, then what do we have? Well, we have this big round apple of a form. Is it here? Yeah, it's here too. I want to feel that that's round. I mean, look, bah, 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 bah. probably this needs to be even lower. Okay, round like an apple. Then this is like a youthful, soft kind of a form. So there's going to be this. This is all pretty. This is all pretty round. So it should be pretty round here, which it is. I think we have things sort of in the wrong. Look, on the contour, you're forgetting the ellipses. And so you're placing things kind of right, but also sort of in the wrong place. You got to be careful with that. And then look, this, if this whole thing is like an egg, right? And the light's coming from here, right? Then probably, probably you're going to have a darkness shadow shade under the chin. And this is like the long stretching side. This is curving away. And then this gets chiseled out a bit. But you're going to have something like this, OK? That's literally the way you need to think of it. Literally. That's not some like clever suggestion or something like an analogy. No, you need to think of it that way. Literally. So I'm literally doing this. Why do I keep saying literally? Nice work, Natasha. I think I'm going to have to, let's take a five minute break. It's 2.30 and then I'm going to have to start rapid firing these. Um, I don't think this one was permitted. So it's not permitted. I don't think, I think that one was a demo Glenn might've done. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but I think that was not, I don't think you were supposed to do this one. This looks like a groove. I'll critique it anyway, but start paying attention everybody more to which images you're supposed to use. Everyone, I'm back. Somebody was just asking, I just looked at the chat. Somebody asked, looks like it was, um, Spun asked, when drawing the ellipses, is the first ellipse the brow ridge or the center of the eyes? Well, there's no rule on that. But with the old masters, they would be the brow ridge. They would put the brow ridge in first, and then usually the nose would be the first things they put in. They sometimes wouldn't use an ellipse for the eyes. They would just let the brow ridge and the nose ridge, and then they would um, draw the eyes freehand. Okay. Yeah, Mike, it looks like I don't yeah, I don't think this was in your images, but it doesn't matter. I'll look at them anyway. First for your five minutes. Um yeah, you know, you're you are um doing a lot of uh you are showing structure, but it seems to me like you're only showing you're only showing that structure in a graphic way, and you're only showing that structure if there's a shadow shape to help you. So that's, I mean, that's a start, right? Because look, you did this, but then why didn't you do any of this, right? So what I would say is, um, what I would say is pay attention to all of the, the structures, not just the structures that are a terminator essentially. Because if you look carefully at what you've done here, this is actually the Terminator we see. This is the Terminator. This is um, mainly a cast shadow, right? And this is uh, beyond the Terminator here. You're only, um, you're only really engaging with the core shadow. Do you see this? And what happens to be 
in shadow on that Terminator, that core shot. I mean, this is this looks like you know, like more like the Riley thing. What what uh what happens to fall into shadow is just a you know just a coincidence, right? So look for all the structures, not just the ones that are on that separation of light and shadow. But overall, though, I do the right kind of thinking. You see more. Okay, grooves. You did pretty good for such a hard for such a hard uh, subject. Um, you know, one thing that is uh. You know, look, you you are picking up like Gruz actually is using here. He's using a straight, and he's using another straight, and then this is rounding off. Um, and I'm saying try to avoid generally using straights. Um, Gruz is a much later master than a lot of these other masters, but when he uses straights, it doesn't stiffen things up. So you want to be careful because in your case, it is stiffening things up. So look, let me, as an example, like this feels very straight right here to me. Whereas with grooves, um, overall, I'm getting the sense that it is curved, right? There is a corner here, but look, you're, you're missing the roundness of it. So I think the straight line construction, um, you're overusing straight line construction in some areas and it's it's causing the, uh, the result is that you're getting a less naturalistic effect. In particular, this feels like a convexity. You don't want any convexities. You're chiseling those out, although he's got them quite round and you got this corner way out in space. So um, it's, a, that's, it's a more of a subtle point. The other thing is, um, I feel a real, I feel a sense of three-dimensional quality in a lot of it, but definitely not here. This feels very flat and copied because we know that if there is this, uh, the mouth, that there's actually a roundness because we have this roundness here, right? But you didn't think of that on the other side. Now, Groot didn't draw it very obviously, but look, there is a little, there's a roundness here. And there is the, and then the the rendering here is following that roundness. So what it looks like is he chopped her mouth off, the this mouth uh, roundness, this orange kind of a shape that Glenn talks about. You've like cut it off. Um, so this, so we don't. In other words, in other words, what we're not getting is the feeling of this roundness enough. We're missing that. So you don't, regardless of what your reference is doing, regardless of anything, you don't want to lose the feeling that the, the mouth is round. And how do you avoid some of the things I was talking about with the contour here? Okay. So this is round. But this needs to be a positive form, a convex form, not a concave form, right? And this needs to feel convex. And this needs to feel convex. And maybe... He's got everything else so round that he was using a straight there for contrast, right? But still we're thinking of this, these volumes as fleshy and round. And then look, he's even, he's exaggerated. It's very hard to draw, but he's exaggerated this. I think maybe angles you have are a little bit off. And he, he actually drew this eye too large as well. So, but you've made the mistake more noticeable. So um, I'm not going to nail you for that because he also did it. But um, I'm losing a sense of the overall roundness here. And then, yeah, that's attaching up here. And then this is in shadow. Pretty good. Um, this is all round. I don't, you're, it looks to me like you're just, you're doing the lines, but it's just copying. You're not really, I feel like, I feel like you're not really, um, here you're, I feel like you are turning the plane here, but you're not curving this under enough. That's really important. And similarly, I can see you separating this, but it needs to be higher here. Cause look, got that corner. So it needs to be higher here. And then um, 
when we get down to the mouth, so getting from here to the mouth, if you've got like a cheruby kind of like round, rounder face, there needs to be this clear difference in the 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 rep, the actual um, way you're modeling this. This needs to be much more open curves, and the gradient it needs to be more general here because it's softer as opposed to like this up here, which is very um, um, there's less fat up here, right? And then look, this is just a copied tone here. What he's actually doing though is he is actually showing a plane change from here. And then he's um, and then he's separating the frontal eminence here. So when you notice these things like this, try to figure out like what are, why is he doing that? What is he doing there? And it'll teach you. This is a really common mistake. This is a very, very, very common mistake is making the reflected light too light. Needs to be darker. Gruz didn't make them that mistake, although he does have a strong reflected light. Yeah, a lot of nice things happening. It's just it's the same basic stuff. We just need to be more. We just need to be more. Um, and this 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 character has an underbite, too, which may throw you off a little bit. Okay, there's this. There's this. Is really dropping. This is opening out. I was talking about like flower petals opening up. Look at look at how that tucks down there. You missed that. You just treated it like a straight line, right? And then there's even a little cleft of the chin. Some good thinking. Still a bit too graphic. Overall, really really good. And the work's getting better. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. Okay, looks like uh, Raven. Um, well, I'll look at your five minutes first. Um, getting a little better. I think you are. You know, like look here. I'm feeling more of a like a three dimensional kind of a sense here. I think I'm getting more of that now. That that's improvement. Here, I mean, same thing. You know, things are curving a bit more. You know, in, in this sort of upshot, um, it needs to be. It needs to be more though. Well, first of all, the big thing I have to. I just have to say, proportion. Your uh, the accuracy and proportions are are um, not very good. They need to be better. So that's something you need to work on. Um, but that being said, I'm going to focus a little more on like conceptually what you're doing and I'll, and I'll pick, you know, this is a hard one. Okay. So you are, I see that you're, you know, you have the corners of the mouth lower, right? I think that's because you're thinking of the ellipses. That's, that's all good. But look at how, look at, so in other words, the ellipse, if the ellipse is doing something like this, right? So it's opening this way, everything needs to open that way. And you're doing it a little bit, but it needs to be much more. So look, look, opening in the direction of the ellipse, opening in the direction of the ellipse. You see, getting taller, it's stretching in the direction of the ellipse. The nose nostrils are moving in the direction of that ellipse. Do you see, it needs to be, and then look, the tip of the nose, you sort of um, got that. You have the eyes and stuff too high relative to how you drew the nose. So look, this is actually coming down. So, and I want you to engage in the, I want you to engage in the forms, not just the features. Remember. So, some of this is just um, ob observing a little bit better. You see, and then look, you don't even need to know the anatomy, just look at it. Like, what is it doing? It's kind of doing this. Oh yeah, Glenn told me about that. That's this line. Okay, well, where is the, where are the corners of the mouth? Oh, they're way down here. What shape is it? Well, it's more like, more like coming around and then it gets pretty narrow on him and he's got 
this is more like a triangular kind of a strong chin and then maybe it's even more like this okay well how wide the cheekbones wider than the masseter uh no not really looks like the masseter is wider maybe this needs to come over a little bit and then this is all opening up this way and then yeah you got that furrowing happening and then The, the shape of the eyes are going to be more triangular when we're looking at it from below. And then this underplane. And then the thing in the ear, they're like, they're like really low, actually more, more than we even have it. And down like this and then this is going to get narrower up here and we're expecting it to be much shorter than it would be if we were looking at them straight on so everything needs to see everything more but you, you have you're moving in the right direction it just needs to be a lot a lot more pushing it more this actually i think you i think you've got a pretty dang good sense of this um, like you didn't really undersell it, you know, in terms of the, the angle, it's, it's quite extreme, right? I think you pretty much, you observed that pretty well, um, on the, sort of more on the outer contour. And then as we get in here, let's see how it goes. I think it's probably back further. And then I think it needs to come over this way a bit more. Oh, this is getting too close here, something like this. Um, don't run the eye so close into the nose, the ramp of that nose, and then let this exaggerate the way it really is in his drawing, All right? Let that, uh, and then just sort of like, I'm looking at the negative space between the eye and the brow, right? And then this is really dropping here. I think you did a pretty good job. And you're even running the lines over kind of the right way. I think you did a good job on this one. It's a tough one. Um, I think you have the ear too open. A bit. But uh, yeah, nice work. It's a Watteau, I believe. And then... I think this needs to be a little more vertical here, this plane change. And then I think you could have been a little more specific on how that comes up. But good job overall on the master study. Nice work, Raymond. Okay. This is Gordon, more 3D, more constructed. Yeah, nice work, keep it up. You're making a mistake though, you're, you're keeping the proportions more as if it was straight on. But remember, if we're looking like down at, if we're looking down at uh, Rajiv, right? So we're seeing the top of his head, right? Then this stuff needs to shrink in perspective as it goes down and you're not shrinking it. So it makes it look like the space is just way too long. But you got the right thinking. The stuff I said before applies, but generally, uh, yeah, keep pushing in that direction. Okay, we have this. I don't know who this is actually. I don't know which artist this is. Let me see. This sort of bishop. That's oh, Parmigianino. Cool. All right. Uh, first thing is you got the tilt wrong, right? Look, yours is going too far this way. And you do more that way, right? 
well, how can we use the ellipses, which I keep talking about, right? How can we use those to, to help us see this? All right, how do I get from the top of the year here to that brow? I'm looking at the reference more. It's pretty dang steep. And I think this is where it needed to be. And then this comes back. And then if it's like this, and then, uh, it's an old man, so I need to be careful that maybe it's this is longer. Maybe I make it a little shorter, but same thing. This probably needs to come up. And if I had that happening, um, I could get the... Uh, I'm just, I started, I'm just simplifying this down a little bit for you. I started taking it too far. Okay, I got the tilt right. So when you make a mistake with that, it's an, un, it's an unrecoverable error. It's like a blue screen of death. So really, really, really try to lock it in before you do any of this nice rendering and all this nice work you did because it just undermines everything. Well, you might say, okay, well, does it matter that much if the tilt is wrong? Well, you don't know it's wrong because if you knew it was wrong, why would you draw it that way? So then when you're actually looking at this stuff and maybe you're like, okay, this angle is like that. Well, you get that angle wrong too. But if you're like, okay, well, the nostril is this angle and you put it here, well, you're putting the wrong angle nostril compared to the construction. So it starts to just ruin your drawing essentially is what it does. It just starts wrecking your drawing. Um, okay, so this lifts, lifts, right? This is relatively straight, little dark patch here to show the direction. It's pretty high here. Brow is moving over that form, like Glenn talks about. This is sort of connecting, and so his brow is lifting, and so he's causing these compressions, this wrinkling, right? Look, this is a gesture that's happening here. Look at this gesture. You actually, I think you did a good job on that. You actually caught, you threw this and you caught it. Cool. Um, pushing this down it needs to drop more than what you did. Okay. Even the cast shadow is exaggerating that gesture. Okay, this is, this is in tone. Uh, you didn't really put it in tone, but this is dropping. more this look look at notice there, there's gonna be that bump there don't miss it even if it's for short and it'll be there for the nasal cartilage or the nasal bone adjoins the uh, the uh, nasal cartilages and then this is overlapping i'm not getting a strong sense of the overlapping from you but they need to be there in this kind of a pose okay so he's got kind of the wrong shape on the nostril a little bit so this is quite low on this side because it's really dropping away this is going to be quite low. So just to like something like this. This is dropping, doesn't come out as far. And then we need this sort of plane to happen. Okay, and then the cast shadow, which is on the uh, the mustache. This is got. This is lower on this side, right? So this is low, and then the side is higher, right? So all, it's all the basic, that's all because of that basic ellipse construction that we started with. Then there's the cat shadow of the lower lip is on the beard, and that beard's moving out in space. Beautiful gesture, the way he did it. Okay. So um, yeah, nice work. Get the initial lay in better. It'll it, um, it'll help. I mean, it'll help. It's it's required. You have to do that. All right. Uh, five minutes are looking more structural. Looking more structural than what you had. You have this straight though, but it's going to dip. Um, 
the stuff is going to dip. But um, yeah, I like I like the overall thinking. Pretty pretty structural. Nice work on those. Really nice, uh, really nice rendering. House cat, it just got the wrong angle. Can you see it? Maybe I, maybe once I point it out, it becomes obvious. But um, look, yours is like this. He's got his chin forward. You got the wrong angle. That's, you know, you get in, you make the, the major errors in the first few um, seconds of the drawing, really. And if I rotate it back more the way it should be, it starts to come apart because you've split the difference. There are some angles you observed from the sculpture, but since your head was constructed incorrectly, it's a blending between, it's like a Picasso. It's like the nose is from the side and then the eye is from the front. That's essentially what, what happens if you make that if you make that error. So um, not it's not a huge deal here. Like I think it's still working rather well. I think um, the way you're handling the rendering is rather nice. Okay. So um, the eyes overall are moving back as they go from top to bottom. Um, yours have a very um, open sense. Like I think you're missing that a little bit. So that's something I'll pay attention to. We just do a, if we do a cross contour line, they need to be going back. Do you see? Um, otherwise, they look bug-eyed. Is what happens if if you don't if you don't get that. Let me just let me just go over. All right. So I want to see this eye come back more, and then. The lid is tallest, or there's the most distance here. I think you did a good job of that. Well, it's a slight upshot, so this is going to be slightly shortened, but it's just rather deep on him. So even if it is um, compressed, it's still rather deep. Um, this is a very uh, on the far side, the brow area around the eye is. It's very important to get those shapes right. Um, You're you're close. I think you're close. And then I think we want to feel we want to feel that under that under um, part of the plane a little more. And Glenn does that too. So I think we want to feel that more. And then you also want to be clear. Okay, this is actually there's this open space in here that's touching light. It's not the lid is not running into the uh, underside of the glabella. Okay, so this you got this bump here, which is nice. I think a lot of people missed it. And I don't get a strong sense of the overlap here. That's more because it's not easy to see in this position, but we know it's there. So there's this overlaps this, this overlaps that, right? So you, you need to make them clear, regardless of what your reference is doing. Okay. Um, I think the nostril is going to raise more here and then. It's got this beautiful spiraling shape. And then the underplane is rather, the underplane is rather um, compressed here. We don't see much of that underplane there. And then this is getting wider. I think you did a good job there. Um, so this needs to drop more. Uh, these bags under the eyes, they need to, it needs to drop more dramatically than what you did. This is, we would not want to hit the lower lid very strong. It's going to come back. And then, um, you know, you get shading in there. Okay, so we know that um, the cheekbones are rather high. And let's do, let, let's follow my advice here. So if we're doing this side, let's jump over to this side. The one thing that's really interesting in this that you didn't really get as clearly as you could is that the actual muscles and the brows are being pulled up. So the actual brow is being pulled up and it's exposing, um, it's exposing the actual, uh, it's called this, artists call it the sausage, but it's also the bone, right? So this is actually the bone of the um, orbit. And because, look, how do I know the eyebrows are raised? Well, I'm just noticing this angle, but also look, this compression up here, it's basically giving us like an arrow that that's being raised. So, um, 
you need to look for expression because it's going to change things, right? So in this case, this is being exposed and we're even getting a light down here, right? And these are deep, these eyes are pretty deep set. So one thing is somehow or another, this is, this plane is too small or, or that, that plane is getting too close to the eyeball. So something needs to move for that to be correct. Um, I think the actual shape of the wing of the nostril is more planed off than what you have. And then the actual uh, nasal labial furrow, which are these, you've got it attaching too low. Uh, I don't, maybe you haven't noticed where it really attaches. It really attaches up here, right? But even though the nasal labial fold is doing this, we have to stress the roundness in th this direction. So you, you don't want to let that get, because um, look, it's same thing back here, the nasal labial furrow. We need to focus on accentuating the angles that show the roundness. Same thing here, right? I need to curve my lines in such a way that I'm accentuating how round this stuff is and not letting it flatten out. This actually, this cast shadow could have been used, I think, to show the, the position there because you do have some here. I think that actually would have helped. But, um, so I know that the, the beard, the mustache is coming down this way, but you, you we were sort of like bending everything to, to be more like this and like this in order to show that three-dimensional um, aspect. Okay, so let's just say we got this steps down, right? And then we have another round form, nice, here. And then what we really have is this round form, which I say is like an egg, here. So this and this are the same. So um, if it's coming rather high here, so what I would expect to see is I'd expect to see you know, it, it being a bit strong there, which is basically what we have. And then we actually have a couple of corner turns like this. One, two, okay? Here, let's see if we can find those. Okay, so it looks like this is one and I think that's two, something like that. Let's see, two, yeah. And what I'm noticing now that I've run across there is that the um, the, the cheekbones are not really positioned symmetrically from one side to the other. Like this is up too high this way, so we'd have to we'd have to fix that. And then one thing I'm not getting a strong sense is I'm not getting a, um, a sense that we're getting from the nodule to sort of this area. I know there's a lot of stuff interrupting it, right? So there's things that are getting in the way. Like for example, you have the um, the uh, nasal labial fat that's crossing over this. And then you got fat in here, and then you got the mustache. You have all these things, right? But we still want to feel that connection. So from here, we want to feel, and it could be the way that we do the the way that we actually uh, find the the terminator there, right? We want to get we want to get our way from here, all the way to the cheekbone, right? And then here, so we got this na nasal labial fat. Okay, I think it needs to be fuller here, or feel fuller at least. That's how full it is, it is on that side. And then with this, these patterns, you know, can change based on the person. They can be very um, unique in how these patterns are. But this nasal labial furrow is sort of wrapping around. So let's make sure it's doing it on that side too. Do you see it wrapping? It's making its way. Boom, 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 and it's coming in here. And then one area that I think we really didn't do it, um, didn't model enough in, is the chin. So really, we need to have this underplane, and then. Um, we need to have like the way this actual chin is, is, is working is it's like this in his case and it comes down and um, you can do this with the calf shadows but we want to get that feeling and we want to separate that chin away from like the um, the double chin the the fat underneath it's called submandibular fat that's what it's called here so the actual jaw is going to do this that's what the jaw is doing, but you need to separate this. You're just sort of treating it all the same. 
This is fat underneath the uh, underneath the jaw. And then I don't think you're getting enough sense of the the turn of the neck. He's looking over one shoulder. Well, how do I know? Look at his collar, right? So it needs to be like, this is a stretching. And even though, yeah, like I know that that's down here. And then this would be a compression on the side, right? So let's see if we have any evidence of that. Oh, we do. The softness right there. So a lot of good thinking. Nice rendering. Um, to take it further, you want to tune out, uh, tune to the forms more. And now that I did that draw over, hopefully you see, look how asymmetrical those are. So check your symmetry across. Um, this is too flat, right? It needs to get, needs to be uh, carved out a little more. And don't just lose everything in the shadow. I want you to model this area. It's lazy to just drop it in a shadow. Not that you are totally doing it, but that's just like a lazy technique to just drop everything in the shadow. If you have time, uh, go in and, and model that, right? Because there's so much to learn in that area. You don't want to, you don't want to miss that opportunity. Nice shot, house cat. Connie. I think you're five minutes. Um, I think they're getting better. They're getting better. Um, like he's getting too wide across here. And I don't think you should be doing any rendering. You know what I mean? Because you, you haven't really gotten all the shapes to lock together yet. So I wouldn't be doing hands. I wouldn't be doing hair. I would really just try to get the pieces to lock together more. Spend more of your time with that. And also like, like look, this is this angle. This is that angle. This is that angle. These are um, these are like pre vilpu basics for head drawing, right? We're doing a very advanced method, but even in the most simple methods, you got to get those construction, uh, the construction working better. I can see that you're trying to think 3D here. I think that's there's a lot that's working there. Although it looks to me like you just couldn't quite figure out what was happening. So hopefully my demo earlier will help you with that. The one I did, I think was the first demo I did, maybe will help. Um, looks like uh, I don't know. This is a Van Dyke. Or uh, probably a Rubens, almost look like uh, Shakespeare. Okay, um, same problem here. This is just one super wide brick for the forehead, um, which we don't want. You know, we want. I mean, look, look at the tones here. Look at the difference in, in value here. Do you see that? That that that. Those are all different values. So it's like we need to bevel out. We need to bevel that out. Otherwise, it just looked weird. It looks like a big, big uh, forehead that doesn't. Uh, Looks like a five or six head. It looks like a forehead that doesn't, um, this doesn't feel natural. And then that actually spills into here. If you make that mistake, it spills into there where everything just starts to look a little unnatural. So let's carve up that forehead. I'm just going to like back away and, and I'm going to just do this one a little differently. I want to point out the big structural feeling, the sculptural feeling of it and, and maybe how that's a bit different. So what I see is this is a bit, this should be a bit more upright. Okay. More upright. Then there's not a big, the cheekbones actually brought more than what you have. And you've done that on both sides, right? The cheekbones are a bit taller, I guess I would say, right? And then the actual mouth is rather small, narrow, I should say, to be specific. It's rather narrow and it's, it's like a youth, it's got a youthful look. So there's this roundness here, okay? Um, the, in between the, uh, the glabella area, the area in between the eyes, right? The brow is a bit more narrow and it's a very narrow nose and then pretty planar. It's pretty uh, angular. And then we've got our step down. You made the mistake. Glenn tells you this often. You're running the eye into the nose. Don't do that. It's a big mistake. It's not a big mistake. It's just a big mistake in Glenn's world. Glenn really doesn't like, he thinks that's like it's one of his pet peeves. <laughs> so don't do that. And then uh, this actually is more, these are more straight, right? They're not as, uh, they're not as, um, they don't raise as much because they're a bit more straight. And then all of this needs to be like pretty light. Be, um, I think it's over modeled. So all that needs to be a bit lighter. And uh, this is also a bit straighter. He's got more of like a aristocratic, cool dude, he's too cool for school look, which I don't think he really captured. And, uh, I feel another issue is you're you've lost the chin. So you, you got so um you got so caught up in the in in the goatee that you've actually lo lost the fact that I think he's got a rather strong chin. 
which I think he missed. And then this is rather like low the way it connects. So um, I want you to look at the big structures and try to get those a bit more um, feeling like this is actually lifting too much. Feeling like like the like the model. You're going to recognize him more um, from the overall uh, sense, and then also it'll help you do like look. That's like that's all too low, right? If you're just focusing, sort of like the same thing I'm saying with like the five minutes, that drops more. If you if you focus on the big, this is opening up, and this is turning like this. And this is going behind somehow. This is actually more squared off shape wise. This is going back into space more. Like we do have like a tuft here, like clown, clowny. This is going back into space. So I'm giving you the advantage here of sort of um, talking to you more like a sculptor. I am a sculptor, that's what I do. Um, and I want you to. Think about how these things come together a little more. Look, this is actually more over here. And then this actually starts to look too, even then it's still too curved. So I want you to look at the major masses and focus on those. Focus on getting those closer. You know, the actual lips are rather thin. The upper lip at least is rather thin. And then this is actually rather squared off. Do you see what I mean? And look at, yeah, we gotta have the center of that chin. So if those big forms look more like the Rubens, the whole thing will be more successful. Doing a lot right though. Um, I mean, you're, you're over modeling this, but if you're thinking 3D, you're working in the right direction. I want you to just see the big, see the big forms. Like this actually looks like it's even higher here. And then once you do that, um, once you start doing that, you can get the likeness better, but also it'll start informing you more, right? Because we're so, uh, in this class, we're like, oh, we're not going to copy, we're not going to copy, we're not going to copy, but that doesn't mean don't look, right? And you'll learn more if you're looking. Look, this feels too round. So those five minutes, really the idea is that you're actually practicing this kind of a thing. You know, do you see what I'm saying? It's like these overall shape forms, as, as Carl Van Oss calls them, how they fit together. Nice work, Connie. Let me bring up uh, the chat so I don't miss anybody. Yeah, um, exaggeration is common among the masters like Rubens and Van Dyke and Michelangelo, but I would just settle for you I would be happy if um, Arch, if you guys just got it, if you guys just saw it, let alone exact. It's not like you guys are nailing it and I want you to exaggerate it. You guys are missing it. So before you exaggerate, you actually need to understand it. So that would be like a, a first step. And then, yeah, we could uh, we could take it further. We could take it further and really and really accentuate it, right? This is definitely an accentuated, exaggerated um, head. And, um, but that, you know, that that's what mastery is. You're looking a lot more 3D, but I, I do feel like you're sort of trying to do too much with the tone. You can do more with um, you can do more before you make it a value study. So uh, let's see, bring this up. You don't even need any. You don't need tone at all to do this correctly to get your lay-in looking better, right? Okay, look, this is lower, lower than you have it. This is, think of these as positive forms. See if we come back more. You don't have to draw the features to, you're drawing more of the structures. Bring your geese. And look should be sort of expecting to see that, the cheekbones there. 
Look. We don't really have to get into the rendering yet. You can explore these shapes and these relationships and keep correcting this stuff. Without necessarily getting into it, uh, getting into uh, the render. Do a center line. Do a center line basically every time until you're more advanced. And even then, you probably should be doing a center line. Up the teeth. This is the center line. Like this. Right? I think what I'm noticing though is that this stuff needs to compress more on the lower side. It's got a tall head, but it's not it's not as much. Like there needs to be much more cranium. Right, like this is getting too long. But anyway, you don't need to do so much rendering in order to uh focus on that stuff. Okay. Um what I don't like is that I'm just seeing a lot of straight lines, right? And I want them to follow the, the curvature of the form more. So um, we want to keep accentuating the curvature, accentuating the curvature rather than, uh, than losing it, right? So in other words, this is, I mean, there's no question that this is an egg or not, right? It's the most eggy looking head imaginable, right? an egg that we're seeing from a very extreme angle as far as heads go. There's really no such thing as an extreme angle. It's just people suck at drawing the head. <laughs> There's no, what's an extreme angle? It's like, it's just, it's just form, right? Uh, what's an extreme angle on a box? It's just the box. But because we're so, um, because we draw the head from the front and from the side, because of our skill set, some angles seem hard. Um, but the egg helps with that. Okay, I would have liked to see, um, I think there needs to be a lot of care right here because it's actually showing how the back of the head is meeting the uh, the neck. So being quite careful there. Also, because we're seeing the ear from below, I think we need to see it hook around more. I think you did a good job here and you're showing how it gets narrower, but um, we got to find that other side here because like this is one side, that's the other. And then where you're actually, it's subtle, like you're just rounding this, you know, but if you were thinking of the anatomy a little more with experience, you could actually, you could suggest more with the same amount of line, right? Because I'm actually thinking about, I'm just thinking about how the actual skull planes are changing. So Watteau knows a lot of that. And so there's a little finesse there that it's not easy to pick up on in a master copy if you don't know the anatomy. Um, I think, look, you have this uh, quite low, but look, this is where the other side of that is, right? The other side of that is sort of this roundness here. So just make sure they look like they're actually going to be the same, right? And then same thing here. This area here, it's got to be reflected in here somehow. And one thing that this chin doesn't quite feel like it's a positive form. It feels like it's a negative form. So just whatever his actual lines were doing, you still want to think about, uh, look, and I think this needs to come over here. You still need to think about your construction. And then here, remember I said this is not a line? Well, this is, he's really accentuating that truth um, because he's a master. He's also like showing you, look, there's no line here, right? It, it's, um, it's a series of forms. And in some positions, the idea of it being a line is totally, he's not even putting any line there at all. He's really just accentuating the, the roundness of it. Um, okay. When you're doing the, um, the brow, don't get so caught up with the eyebrow. Try to see the overall forms a little more. This might be, need to come down more. And then try to get these overlaps right. The shapes right in that area. And then this eye is here, this eye is 
I don't know if he, I don't know if he drops as much as you did it. You're kind of accentuating that. But um, yeah, a lot of nice stuff. Uh, keep it up, noobs. We'll have to change your name soon. Okay. Uh, the five minutes are. I think this is. I think to me this is. Uh, this is Agnes. Um, these are too painterly and too graphic in nature. Um, I think I'm assuming this one is the uh, finished one. Uh, but you're very much um, working graphically. Like these are very, very graphic. And we want to be more constructive, right? That's all, I mean, it's basically all we're talking about. Um, so I don't want to hammer that point again for the millionth time in, during this session. I'm sure you'll hear more about it. But okay, look, you're like opening this up. You're making this into a three quarter. It's not what it is. It's an upshot, right? So let, just forget forget all of the way you, you've been drawing heads for as long as you've been drawing. And it looks to me like you've been drawing for a while. Forget all that. Forget everything you think you know about drawing the head. Just get that to start with, right? Just get that. And you'll just find that all of the construction's in the wrong place. Same thing here. Look. Look. See? See? Look at how everything's in the wrong place. I mean, this is what we're doing here. I'm not expecting you to know how to do this right away. But it's not that, it's really not that complicated, this first part, right? Not that complicated. To be um look, this is actually quite like we don't see much of this stuff. But um a lot of times uh what we see from the master, what we see from mastery is an amazing simplicity. And it's actually harder, it's harder to um think simply. And all that stuff we know gets in the way of us um it makes it harder. The more we know, the harder it is for us to simplify sometimes, unless we've learned you know, how to do that from the beginning of our education. Look, and once I have that egg, the way I decorate the hair, all of this stuff is all informed by that. Look, it's just going off to one side of the egg. It's just going up on the other. And this is just, you see? That's what I want you to work on. You're doing a lot of nice stuff. You have a lot of experience, as far as I can tell, but you got to get the eggs right. You got to get the eggs right. Um, otherwise, it's a non starter. So I want you to really focus on that initial stage, Agnes. Nice job. Nice job. Okay. Um, yeah, everyone, everyone's making these more structural. You have a weird, who is this, Justina? You have a little bit of a weird tendency to like want to like dance your lines a bit, um, which. It's probably just you trying things, you know, but um, it gives a kind of a um, like a like an Al Hirschfield kind of a look sometimes. It's like you're, you know, I know you're trying to be more curved, but be careful because if you um, overdo it, it starts to become like a stylistic thing. You see, it starts to become like a, uh, you know what I mean, Con uh, uh, more of a contrivance, right? Arch says pushing to exaggerate it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's great. It's so funny that 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 this should be like a secret. It's in every how to draw book for like 500 years, well, up until recently. And it's just like it's the only way that the masters work. Um it's it's sort of crazy how we've come so far that the absolute basics of head drawing are now um not well understood. I find that really strange okay yeah you're not getting the fact that all right it's an upshot but you're drawing it as a three-quarter so what's the difference well it's a bit of an upshot it's not a huge upshot but in an upshot you know we're going to be seeing more of this area it's going to be taller essentially okay uh depending on the nose right because it can be an upshot and the nose is like pointed down but we're going to see more of the underplane of the nose um the lower lid is going to be flatter the upper lid is going to be taller in an upshot, flatter, taller. Um, the brows are going to become higher because we're looking up into them. Think of looking up at the roof, at the eaves of your roof. Go outside your house or wherever you live, apartment, whatever. Open the door, then look up. You're going to see 
So looking up at the roof, at the corner of the roof, it's going to be tall, right? So this has got to be tall, you know? This has got to, so that's going to be exaggerated. Well, the mouth is going to move, even, the mouth is close to the nose. It's going to be even closer to the nose in that shot. And the lower lid is, everything, you know, everything's bending this way. Boink, 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 everything, right? This is going to be more like that. Um, this stuff is going to be rounding out more this way. The upper lip is going to be taller. Now, he can have a short upper lip. It's still going to be taller in this kind of a situation, right? The lower lip is more flat and it's um, downplayed, right? Uh, we're going to be looking up. This is going to feel taller. And then the no, uh, the the chin, we're definitely not just going to see the downplane. We're going to see the underplane. I'm not just the front plane. We're going to see the underplane of the chin too. The cheeks are going to relatively feel like they're dropping. And then the forehead is going to be shortened, right? Forehead's going to be shortened because it's, it's receding in space, right? So all those things, and then where the actual neck is, is going to appear, depending on how the neck's uh, going, it's going to appear. Um, we're seeing things more like that. So all these things have to happen in an upshot. And if you don't even know you're drawing an upshot, you're just like, um, you're, you're, all, you're gonna just keep missing these things. Cause these are sensitive things, they're not so obvious. So that's the big thing. You're drawing an upshot as a three quarter view. This is just, you know. Now, that being said, there's a lot of 3D magic happening. I really, I mean, like your eyes, the cheekbones, everything feels pretty 3D. So I think you're doing a good job of that. Um, it's more in the lane that I think the problem is. So, um, I mean, I've already talked about this one several times. I think you have a lot to learn from those other ones as well, but overall really good solid 3D thinking. It's got a nice gesture and a movement. It's a bit contrasting, like everything is either, like everything's either dark, sort of a medium or white. So you only have like three values. Um, as we move into value, you're gonna wanna get more uh, um, interested in that. But also like I want you to still pay less attention to these things don't pay less attention, pay an equal amount of attention to these things, and then pay more attention to all of this, more, even more than you are. Nice work. I have to speed up a little bit, everybody, because uh, just I'm not running out of time. So these are gonna be more, plus I've, I've said a lot of what needs to be said. And I think that if you watch all of this, you're gonna, you're gonna get a lot of it. So you're, you're bringing this down too far, right? So, it's more like this. It's more like this. More like that. So, it's the, the basic construction. You just got off on the wrong foot. Um, can't help but feel like you um, need to strengthen your basic form drawings. Like this is pretty advanced stuff to render like this, but what I'm not seeing is, I'm not seeing a clear sense of, I don't think you're strong enough in form drawing. I think you're a little bit out of your depth. So I'm not saying quit, I'm not saying that, but you need to, do draw boxes, draw eggs, draw forms in 3D and, and get a better sense of them because it looks like your form drawing is, is uh, relatively weak for, for this class, at least for where we're at here. And that's gonna manifest itself here. So you might be like, oh, I'm kind of getting it. Maybe I need another 10%, but it's actually, you need another, you know, 1400% It's just because you're not sensitive to it yet. You need to focus on your basic form drawing, your basic form drawing skills. Um, in terms of how you're interpreting uh, what you're seeing here, okay, up, and this is dropping, right? I'm thinking of that ellipse. This is low, up, wrap around, turn the corner this way, over this, comes forward. Okay, now this right here is this in symmetry. This right here is this in symmetry. This is um, this, okay? All right, I want you to think of these areas in between. Boom. Boom.
And then if, if I'm thinking of that, then I got to think of it on the other side too, right? This is the cheekbone, but you can't go as high as you're doing it because the cheekbone ends, right? And then this is the round form of the eye, right? This needs to come out this way. I think you're you're doing a lot of the Vilpu technique, right? It's just your your um, form drawing, your, your basic form drawing is undermining that. He's he's sort of expecting you to have that to be stronger, and um, if you if you don't have it, you're 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 a little bit handicapped in, in your ability to do the the to to do what Glenn's teaching, and you might not realize like that's like oh I don't know what's wrong, and it's going to be that. It's just you're not quite. You, you know, like you're not quite like this is a positive form, right? Um, you're not quite seeing the 3D enough, and it's just like it's like sabotaging you, you know. And you're working so hard, I can see that, um, but some of that basic stuff is getting in the way, right? So I think this is working better than this. So um, keep doing your five minutes, Simon, but also um, keep drawing your forms. Keep drawing your forms. I don't want you to I don't want you to drop the class because I can see you're learning, you're making progress and you're working really, really hard. It's just I have to see, you know, if I see it, I have to say it. Otherwise, I think I'm I'm not I'm not being a good teacher. I have to say that more drawing, draw eggs. I mean, draw eggs, draw boxes, draw cylinders, sketch them from perspective, uh, in perspective, from imagination, sketch them from life, turn them, turn them. If those get better, these are also going to get better. Nice work. D King. Oh, I get it. You're the king. Um, okay. Looks to me like you did like several master studies here. Um, you didn't need to, but that's cool. Uh, I think one thing that's, I think what's getting off is the proportions, right? So um, that shape is just, it's, it's kind of off model. What was that, Leonardo? Um, okay. I'm going to draw the shape the more the, more the way I see it. Um, I mean, quickly here, I don't have time to. a little hard for me not to actually um draw the way you are because it's just like natural it's like an underdrawing but i think what needs to happen is you need to get a little more sense this is more like a cylinder than an egg in this case here but what the real issue which i haven't fixed enough i'll do it now though is that this is not coming back far enough and this is pretty straight and this kicks up more this way. So really, a lot of it is in the shape of that. But it's, it's overall it's overall accuracy. It's overall accuracy. Next time, I think I'll draw alongside, because otherwise I end up just sort of keeping it close to what you what you had done. Um, who else are you doing here? OK, let's look at this one. All right, so. Just keep it really simple here. Let's just bring the, the chin out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna only be using basic, basic construction. Okay, and look, this is probably more like this, I'm guessing. This is what I want to see. I want to see you get the actual uh, big shapes and big forms closer. Nice work here. I definitely over modeled. You know, you're getting too dark everywhere. 
you know, um, let the lights breathe a little bit. It's it, you can get you can you, know, you can adjust that habit later. It's just a little harder, and it's natural when you're learning Glenn's method to overmodel because that's he really pushes it on that side. All right, you're you're, you're missing that it's an upshot, right? So you're missing this characteristic that is going to be affecting everything. Right, everything, I already talked about this so much, I don't wanna do it again, but everything's gotta be bending that way, bending that way, okay? So I, it can't go up as much as you did, it's bending that way. This has got, can't go uh, down as much as yours is, it's bending that way, you know? It is, uh, lower lip can't be as round on the bottom, it's bending that way, it's bending that way, it's bending that way, that is like the main thing, you see? You gotta get that. Good 3D thinking though. Appreciate it. Um, I think you're heading in the right direction. Nice job, DK. Vedant. This is very um contoury, very contour drawing. This is like um Picasso. This is just now it's something you're not letting your 3D forms inform what you're doing, but this is sort of naive drawing. And then really. You don't want, this is a complete waste of everyone's time here, right? Because this is precious seconds that you could be spending on the structure, right? Okay, so take time away from that and then put time towards this. Uh, what is this? Can't be that one, is it? I can't find one that looks like what you're drawing. Maybe that's me. If you're drawing this one, I, I kind of I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to nail you on something if you're not. But if you're drawing this one, um, you've totally got the the axis wrong. I think so, but look, it's going back this way. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but um, look. Here's the problem. You're just doing contour drawing and then you're just adding some shading. You're supposed to be drawing construction, right? It's supposed to be like, this is what you're supposed to be practicing, right? You're supposed to be practicing the, um, the three-dimensional forms. I wanna see more of this. Not exactly this, right? But something more. I want to see that you're actually. Um, I want to see that you are actually thinking more structurally, right? It doesn't have to be planes. It doesn't have to be planes, but it needs to be three D, right? It needs to be three D. This is just. Um, it's 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 more. It's it's better than it was for sure. It's more three D. But you're just you're not you're not really committing. You're still drawing the way you draw, and I need you to, I need you to step off that 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 plank and jump into the water. You're not. I don't know. Maybe it's how much experience you have that might be getting in the way. It also could be like a trust issue. Whatever it is, you need to stop drawing like you and start drawing like Glenn for this class at least. You need to. You're not synthesizing your approach with Glenn's approach. You are doing Glenn's approach. That's what being a good student is when it comes to art, right? Later on, then you can decide, you know, how much you want to do this or that. This is more in the spirit, I think, but you're making them, um, this is more 3D, this is more the right way. You're still copying and, and you're getting a little confused on some of this. So like, look, here you're going down. Okay, yeah, it is doing that, but you need to then more obviously hook into a positive shape. Otherwise, it looks you're getting a concavity, right? I like how this is coming up. I think this is good. Um, make your way around here. I think with the eye, you copied it. Um, although I like what I'm seeing in, in here, but in the eye, you went back to copying, right? Just focus on the form. Although you didn't do what I was saying about compressing it that way. I think that's nice. Um, you know? Figure out your way from here to here. Don't just leave it. What's going on back here? 
You're like, oh, it's nothing. No, it's not nothing. It's the side of the head. All right, so then temporalis is like this. Maybe the cheekbone's like this. Maybe this is the back of the cranium. And then this is the rear side of temporalis. I don't want you to, I don't want you to phone it in. That's an American expression. It means being lazy. I don't want you to be lazy with anything. I want you to really explore that form. You know, be, be nurtured by it. Look, I want you to really forget it's a head. And I want you to just really find your way around this. This uh, It's like that your body is a wonderland. <laughs> I want you to explore all of the these changes more. And look, yeah, this is this is like a squarish thing. I'm getting sloppy, but you, you're kind of doing it. I want you to do that more. You know, because this is how we actually learn what the forms are. It's like, yeah, I can tell you, Glenn can tell you, Ray Bustos can tell you. But most of most of what you are going to use in your career is going to be the observations that you yourself make. And so even more important than one of us saying, oh, this is how this plane turns, is actually you learning how to find that information out for yourself, right? Keep, keep going in that direction. Nice work, though. I think overall you have the right idea here. The five minutes, I just don't think you're doing it. Here, it's more. It's more of the right idea. Nice work, Fadon. Okay, they picked a hard one. This is Akari. Um, yeah, you're doing it more. You're doing it more. I appreciate it. These feel more three D to me, for sure. Um, let's just pick one. Because you're heading in the right direction, I just want to I want to encourage you on it and help you on how you can uh, just keep taking it in the, in, the, in the direction we want. Okay. So you had the right idea that you're like, basically the way you're treating this is you're treating this like, like steps, right? That are going away this way. And that's the right idea, I think. That's a good approach. You just, you need to just be a little more aware of like, okay, well, how, how tall are these? And, and, and um, be a little more exact with the angles because this is how you're going to get your likeness, right? So don't be afraid to, because uh, these are really not what you're typically seeing in, in a head from, um, you know, more of the, the typical angles. So it's all going to feel very unnatural, but really um, keep, keep treating this like it is uh, like a monumental or a terrain or something like that. The more you can um, sort of forget that it's a head for the time being and treat it just as like a sculptural thing, kind of the faster you're gonna make progress. So just keep doing this, but just focus on focus on the form even more than you're than you're doing. And it might mean forgetting about anatomy for the time being and just sort of really using like the sculptural part of your brain to, to kind of get this. And then you can come in and sort of like check. You're like, okay, well, you know, I'm expecting it there based on what Glenn said, and um, maybe this is a bit lower. And but um, it seems to me like you're getting into the kind of place where you're really feeling it more as three dimensional form, and that's what I wasn't seeing from you as much before. So I just want you to to keep it up. And then, um, and then if you do this in a five minute, you can come back and you can really, uh, you can come back and you can correct it. You know, so um, in some angles, like you seem to go kind of backwards a little bit. Um, I think in the extreme angles, you're forced to use more of this method because it's it's so out of your comfort zone. I think when you get an I think when you get something like this, um, you are a little bit more just reverting to. I mean, look, I see what I see here is I see Loomis ball this thing and then copying shapes, right? That's what I'm seeing there. So, I mean, look, you missed that the forehead is coming like this, but sculptural forms, sculptural forms, right? Even at the expense of accuracy, I'd rather be sculptural and, and not flat and not, um, and not copied basically 
I'd rather have that than um, amazing accuracy. So I just want you to keep thinking of keep thinking of the three dimensional the three dimensional aspects of this. And really emphasize emphasize the things that are um, surface based, and try to de-emphasize the uh, the shape based stuff. At least while you're at least while you're learning this, right? So if you can if you can make a form observation, like a big observation, do that as opposed to doing a feature or whatever it is, right? Keep it really like sculptural. Right? This looks a bit more like, you know, graphic. So I think you have the right idea there. This is probably your best one. Probably second best here, third. And then these are getting a bit flat, but generally right idea. Really nice work in this master study. Because because this is a painting, you don't have the advantage of um, looking at the line works. You have to add your own. So it's a little tougher to draw from a painting, but I think you, I think you overall are doing a good job. Okay, I mean, your ear is too close, I think. So, and it needs to be going back more this way. And so she's older, right? So the lobes are probably a bit um, lower, but basically if I, I'm going to do what, sort of like what I estimate it being. And what I'm noticing is um, this is, you're kind of getting it, but the construction is is basically, it needs to, your construction needs to come over this this way more. Let me show you what I mean. I'm just gonna draw. I'm gonna I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch my gears and just think like a sculptor for a minute. I'm just gonna draw sort of round forms. Look, this stuff comes back. And it comes under, right? Look, it's more like this. The chin is coming forward, right? Jaw is coming back. So it's a little bit of like the angles of everything. Uh, although I, I got to say, I think you did a really good job here. Look, it's a little bit of a snarl. Don't get confused, though. Snarl is not going to change the skeleton, right? It only is changing uh, this pole here, like a cone, right? This is really nice. I think you, you, I think you probably learned a lot from that drawing that nose. So this is even pulled up, right? So we're going to expect to see a wrinkle there. Or in this case, a wrinkle like that. And if this is really doing more like what I said, really feeling my way around. Sort of this turban. It's going back more. Um, I'm drawing in a certain style because it um when I'm thinking sculpturally, this is the most natural way to actually describe the lines, but it's not how I'm using the lines. What I'm trying to communicate is how I'm using my mind, right? So do you see a little bit how I'm shifting the, the masses, the volumes, the forms? And this mouth needs to be over here more, I think. Do you see? Going up. So it's that the, the stuff that uh, is going to make the work better, um, the biggest stuff that's going to make the work better is that stuff that you, it's what you're doing in your five minutes. You see? Thanks, Miriam. Good night. Um, the stuff that really is going to help you the most is the stuff that from the very beginning of your, of your drawing. So, um, Just just focus on on really sensing where those volumes are and getting them right. That aside, I mean, look, once I got rid of that, this looks very flat. This flattens out. This flattens out. Some of these things don't seem to connect correctly, right? When I take it away. Um, in particular, we're not getting over here and then swooping over. That movement is being missed, but it's really obvious in the original. And this movement down this way and this movement here and... This I'm talking about gesture now, right? 
So a lot of these, uh, and look, it's more like a, this. Do you see I'm drawing the gestures? So a lot of this is the gestures that you're not quite sensitive to yet. That being said, I think the way you're rendering it is, is I mean, look, this is very 3D. It's like a column, right? And it gets wider. That's well done. This is a shape, not 3D. This is like an egg. And it's almost, it's almost like, a, like a pyramid that's rounded off. Well done here. Very 3D. That's very 3D. The eye is sort of like a round compressed form. Good job there. This is just copying the shadow shape. That's flat. That's no good. Um, no good, like I said here. Uh, this feels very round. Like I get a feeling that that's a round form and that you've got this overlapping. So I think that's good there. But sometimes you're doing it, sometimes you aren't. You know, you got to just focus on it. And also like, just, but overall shape, you know, overall shape stuff like this, the overall, and you can look at this, right? Remember I was saying before, uh, it's not against the rules or something, but you do need to sort of get the actual, um, you got to get the overall uh, placement of things closer because it's off. Thank you, Akari. Nice work. Big improvement. Okay, we got Salva. Okay. When you're yeah, when when you're tilting this up, right? You need to um you need to drop it more on this side. Um off model. You know, he doesn't I mean this looks like a a Frazetta painting of a Navajo man. Um that's just not that's just not Razive. But this looks like uh uh, Javier Bardem in No Country for Old Men. So there's a likeness thing, you know. Um, that looks a little more like Rajiv, but it's just getting those shapes um, a bit closer will help you. Um, but since I don't have as much time, I, I could I could talk more about that. But I think I want to focus on this. Okay, so the angle's wrong. You're dropping his chin. It's like lift your chin. You know, like you're getting your portrait done. Lift your chin for me. Will you lift your chin? But look, you drop dropped the chin. But this chin is really out here. So um, the layout's wrong. Overall, there's a bit of a distortion happening here. This stuff is stretching out too much. And this is dropping down too much. So aside from that, I can really see you using the Vilpu um, construction, at least around the brows. Like I really see you using Vilpu's method here. And so, and that that is what what's working best about this is the stuff that you're um, you're using Vilpu for. Because all this feels really, really 3D, right? So let's just, I mean, let's just adjust it away from Glenn's general kind of uh, demo and let's just find more of what uh, this particular uh, person or this sculpture is doing. Look, this is dropping like this. So a lot of this is just like we're using the same thinking you're using, but um, look, this is this, this is like sort of a raised, a raised brow. And then look, look at this roundness here, you know? This is sort of hollow because it's older, didn't have strong temporalis muscles. You know, one of the muscles of mastication of chewing because he's older. We lose muscle as we get older. Look, this needs to come this way forward. So I'm, I'm sort of like, I'm using the same um, construction you used. And I'm just pushing it more in the in the direction of, of how this particular, um, this particular situation, this needs to come back. This needs to be uh, flatter. This needs to come up. And then look, look, this is an overlapping. This overlaps. This, um, the, the cartilages are coming back like this. This is more horizontal, more pinched here. And you know, you, you have a, you, you're making your, uh, your Terminator too um, narrow, right? And so this needs to come up. Okay. And then get this nice, Glenn talks about this nice heart shape. You can really see it here and how they've, uh, how Bernini's depicted this, this figure. This is just like a down plane, right? And then uh, this mustache has got a plenty of volume, right? It's got plenty of volume. I would like to, I guess, see more of that evidence, you know? It's going down this way. So I think it's more about your building forms. Just make the forms look more 
more uh, closer to, you know, more on model. Look, this is going this way and it's overlapping. This is rather short, boxy and overlapping, right? So every shape and every angle can be, look here, you're doing this like floppy air, right? But just look at Bernini's ear. I'm using more straights because I think you need more corners. So I'm sort of like prescribing a little bit. Look what Bernini's doing. Um, it might be that you just need to work on your accuracy, but it could be also, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play like uh, psychologist here or something, but it could be that you have something that's working and you're a little bit nervous about losing it. And so you're you you're not really as open to changing it because you think you have something that's working. And I just need to say that you have to get out of your comfort zone. Um, and by doing that, by letting go of what you think you're good at and what you think you're doing that's better than, you know, maybe, you know, others, you know, not that we're comparing ourselves, but I'm just trying to think of like this is how we think. Let go of what you think you're doing well in order to improve overall. Nice work. Solve it. See you later, Cecilia. Iden. Wow, that's 3D is F. Jeez. That's really 3D. Okay. Um, you know, yeah, these obviously are not five minutes, but um, they're kind of working, you know. I think if you have more time to get the construction, you get a better result. If you're rushing the construction, it gets kind of wonky. So again, don't render them as much. Don't render them at all. Um, just pick one. Don't render them, get the structure better. That's gonna pay off more, okay? This, this comes in more narrow. This is like jutting out, like a, like a rock in the ocean. This is pretty narrow, relatively. They're like wings, it's like a bird. And then there's the nest maybe. Now I'm not that that bird I just drew is not Glenn's bird. It's not the typical bird. I'm just noticing that the shape of his the fatty areas around his uh around his mouth are also like a bird. Not that that's the only one. But I don't know if that was stretches towards this. So I just want more of that of this of this kind of thing. I want more of the more of the interlocking forms. I don't care about the the values so much. Um, every kid can do this. Every every kid that's rendering their favorite character can copy tones and build up the tones. That's like seriously the easy stuff. What people can't do well is get the form working. Here, on the other hand, I think the the volumes are working quite well, and I and actually the rendering also. I think you're doing a really good job on that. Um. The chin's a little far back, but you basically, I think you mostly avoided that mistake in the face that others did, but you didn't drop this stuff down enough, right? So in other words, you kind of got the chin forward enough and a little more of the upshot, but you didn't. So the side is sort of disconnected from the front. Let's see if I can show you that. Okay, so I'll show you basically where that where that's the case. Okay, so what needs to happen is that this stuff needs to come over more and this needs to angle more and then the, the lobe of the ear needs to be over and this needs to cross out more. So I'm just tilting it this way, spinning it. Now I can't just uh, select it and rotate it because it's a spin in 3D, whereas that would be just a spin in 2D. So, so the side plane is sort of out of alignment. Um, your reflected lights, are borderline too light and you're carving out a, a dark line there. That's for noobs, don't do that. Not noobs, our student, uh, people who are new to drawing. So don't do that. I think um, in some of the forms you're getting a little generic and I think you can, since you're obviously getting more advanced here, I think you can, I mean, the eyes are too large. You can uh, adapt these forms better to the actual shape forms that you're seeing. So let me, let me show you, let me show you an example of it. Okay. So 
basically the right idea, but wrong shape, or at least the shape that is not um, as good as it could be. Look, this is in front, right? That's in front. This is got gesture, this little furrow, the way he did it. One of the greatest artists that ever lived. He can do all kinds of creative stuff. Look, it's more like this. This is a hollow. Um, it's more like that shape. I think you have a little too much reflected light in there. This is just like drawing. This is just like the master drawings, the way they do this. Right? Um, I usually wouldn't draw the eyebrow that directly. I just, just wanted to make a point there. Okay, so look, the, the eyes, I said this before, but look, they need to come back. Back. Look at, look at, look at the eyes from the side. You'll see what I mean. It's a backwards direction. It's really common to forget that um, when you're drawing it from anything but a side view. So look, this needs to wrap around more this way. Uh, I think the nose is too big, probably. The shape of the nostril, I think, could be better. Um, again, just like basic, uh, the proportion, just basic shape form stuff, you know. And this is going to insert into that and insert to the side. But you got the eyes too large, which is also a common thing, especially if you're trying to make it 3D. It's really common that that would happen. Um, and then here, I don't really feel like you're getting that this form is starting here. You, you drill that out as a line. That's a mistake. You don't want to do that. It'll make it, um, it'll make it, fl it flattens it out, uh, drilling out the nasal labial form. And then I want to feel that there's this plane here then crosses under. This is all very flat, uh, the way you've done the mustache. So how can we make it less flat? Well, first of all, just getting the symmetry from one side to the other. I think that'll help so that we can see that this and this are the same. That'll help. Uh, you know, you got a down plane that is the upper lip, but it's also the, uh, look, I think the shape here is, um, but maybe grouping these more, the down plane of the lip and the down plane of the mustache, that'll make it more 3D. I mean, yours is really 3D, but when I say how to be more 3D, it might be like, dude, what, what are you talking about? I crushed it. It can always be better. It can always be better. Um, yeah, I think you're missing the corners there. And I think maybe, look, I think it, it, look, because it's an upshot, right? This has got to like, this cheekbone has got to get to here, right? And this is temporalis, right? So the temporalis is not going to be that strong on an older person, right? Because um, this hollows out, but that cheekbone's got to get back here, right? Does that make sense? Overall, really nice construction. I think here you made a mistake. You made these even. This is uh, something that they would never do in the Renaissance. And most of your teachers and your master are clean not to do that, right? So you want to find the ways in which this is not equal. That's going to feel more natural, right? We, we have to consciously break that up. Also, you're hanging this down too much. And that's a mistake because this is supposed to be an upshot, right? So you're, you're hurting the upshot illusion. Um, this is more like this. This is more like this. Really nice, though. Really nice, really nice construction. You're getting a lot better. Oh, this isn't actually, uh, I don't know why I thought this was Aiden. This is Miriam. Sorry, uh, sorry, Miriam. I just gave all this credit to Aiden. Well, either way, you did great. <laughs> sorry, that's not cool. That would be so annoying if, if I'm saying all these nice things about it and you're saying the wrong name. Okay, Aiden. Um, yeah. It, Getting a lot more three dimensional. I mean, these are the wrong. These are the wrong heads. So you're not drawing the right heads. But they other oh, like says more just extra practice. But yeah, you're getting better. You're getting better at the uh, 3D forms. This was the demo Glenn did. I'll look at this one. Feeling more 3D. I mean, this looks more like Rajiv than it looks like this person, this woman in the drawing. So I think there is a bit of a likeness issue. Um, I think you you tend to make your mouths too wide, like consistently. Maybe I'm confusing you with somebody else. Sorry if that's the case. But be careful with that. Um, okay. Dropping and coming down this way. I think you did a good job with that. This has got a nice gesture to it. 
think you did a good job. I think you got the wrong shape up here, though, right? This is shorter, right? And he's compressing it more. So he's he's for shortening this side more than you are. Um, and then I think your eye feels very 3D, but you know, don't forget about that lid, the upper lid, right? And then this is going up like this. And then you're kind of getting the gesture of this, but the overall shape, I think, maybe got a little bit lost. And then I think you did a good job of just getting this huge, clear plane change there. Um, but get a corner on this side too, right? So your mouth is just getting too, look, your mouth actually here. Um, this needs to come higher, but it needs to be narrower. Something a little more like this. And then this lower, lower lip is really turning out. And then this chin is gonna, you got the uh, cleft in the chin nicely, but I think it's, you're in the wrong place a little bit. And then we need to feel that this is low, right? Because why? Because that, that's why. That's why. Um, your neck is like too long and it's not coming back enough. So don't get sloppy with the, um, the placement outside of the face, right? Don't get sloppy on that. Okay, yeah, I can kind of see what's happening here, but really, just remember it's actually coming down. So don't, even though there's an expression and stuff, don't, don't, don't let that confuse you, regardless of what the uh, what the master is doing. Look, you're missing some opportunities. You're just curving the lines generally, but those curves are sort of like he's he's sectioning off these areas, right? And you're kind of missing that, and um, your ear is in the wrong place. It's interesting that you got rid of the bonnet. Um, I mean, said that I just did it really sloppy when I said, don't do it sloppy. I think that, yeah, this is probably not going to be as far down that way. Yep. Doing a lot of things right. Um, just keep working on getting more of that likeness. Stem. Wow, you've gotten a lot better, Stem. I like that you're overlapping these forms like stairs because it's really the right tool for the job, right? I think you got the right idea for this kind of situation, right? So this is really good. It does have a bit of a boxy feel. It'd be nice to, I mean, you don't have enough time, but it'd be nice to round that out. I think sometimes you're getting just too, this is bad habit. This is just like, um, you know what I mean? That's just like a amateur contour drawing. So even from the front, that's the problem with the side view. You're like, oh, I know how to do a side view. It's like, uh, you know, do you? Do you know how to do a side view? And so whenever you get into a comfortable angle that you're used to, you get cocky and you get too fast and then you forget about a lot of the structure that you work so hard on in these other, in a lot of these other uh, drawings. So. How do we avoid just copying the contour when we're in, when we're in a uh, profile view? Well, one way is you can just don't start with it, right? Which you probably did. You probably did. This is what you probably did. Tell me if I'm wrong. Probably did this because you're like, okay, Joshua tells me to do the egg. He's going to get annoyed if I don't do the egg. You probably did this, and then you probably just went back into contour town, right? So how do we avoid that? Okay, so... One one way we can avoid it if we're in if we know we're very likely to copy because of just the situation, right? What we can do is we can sneak up on it, right? So I'm not going to start drawing the contour. I'm going to start with the cheekbone here. I'm going to look at how it comes down to the mouth, and then I'm going to look at how that actually is overlapping. Now, obviously, I want you to do the proportion checks and everything. I'm sort of like skipping ahead here, right? But what I would but this is just one technique for not copying the contour is just don't start with the contour, right? Start with uh, start with this. And then and then once that's sort of, uh, and I'll, I'm drawing very directly here, whereas generally speaking, I want you to, you know, I want you to use your, your egg and your proportions. But if I started there, then it's already feeling very 3D and I can, uh, I'm not gonna lose it as easily. Okay, so going down more because I've already got something that is um, 
I've already, with my lines I'm using, I've already made it more 3D. Teeth come forward. Do you see? So that's, um, Glenn does this, right? He saves the contour, but not, not exactly the way I'm, I'm saying. This is Joshua's advice. This isn't really Glenn advice at the moment. Um, but if you're worried about copying the contour, don't start with the contour. Does that make sense? Um, okay, let's look at your master studies. Very 3D. I don't know which one. Well, you did three. These are all feeling pretty 3D. Um, maybe I'll do one I haven't done as much. I'll do the uh, I'll do the grooves. Well, were you supposed to do that grooves? I don't actually remember. Maybe. I'll just forget about it for now. Just to uh, these grooves are hard because he distorts things in a way to he he exaggerates and accentuates, and that's very hard to do if you're not used to it. Um, but okay. A lot of things are really um, nice. And I'm going to look, okay, let's just pretend this is a sculpture, not a drawing. And I'm going to critique the sculptural content. How important is the sculptural content? I think it's the most important content. And Glenn, I think, mostly agrees with that. The sculptural content is what we're trying to get to. You're, you're, you're based, this is, drawing is a poor man's sculpture or poor woman's sculpture. We are very quickly, efficiently, and cheaply creating a 3D illusion. So how good the sculpture is, is basically everything. That's everything. So, okay, let's critique the sculptural elements of it. All right, so I think this needs to um, come lower here, right? Um, and then I feel like the eye is just too round this way. It's gotta come back. It's gotta come back more. So I, I wanna feel that the eye's moving back in this direction a little bit more. Um, I think you did a pretty good job on the nose. You're oh, but you're not overlapping this. Like this form needs to overlap, and then it gets narrow, and then you're not connecting the columella. So don't just leave that in space. You want to uh, you want to show how it connects. Maybe this is more like this. Okay, so we've got this. We've got this. This is curving under. That's all good. Um, I think this is. I think this form is just. It's not quite the right shape. The way you drew it. Um, and I think that uh, we want to feel the roundness, like the double roundness. And I want to feel that that's coming forward more, jutting out forward in space a little more than what you did. And the, I don't think those shapes are quite right. And then uh, this is tucking behind. It's round higher than what you did. And then I think this pin is like a little bit more like caricatured in the way he did it. I think you could you could get more of that quality out of it. Pretty good here. This is needs a curve under. I think you had it sort of bending the wrong way. And then remember, this goes in, this it goes in uh, in front of this, and probably that needs to come back a little more. And then for the masseter, I feel like okay, you're turning here. Maybe I think you got it a little too heavy down here. And then we've got these forms, um, these jow this jowling that's happening. And then this stuff needs to slide over more. It's more of a gestural thing. It's a little more extreme, right? Okay. Just continuing to look at your sculptural forms. And then I think this needs to come higher, right? This is not the young person, but they're not, I mean, there's, they have a slightly higher head, hairline. So maybe it's somebody who's either losing their hair or maybe it's just somebody who's actually not as young as they're being portrayed here. I think that, um, I think I need to feel that that's going this way more. And I need to feel that, I need to feel the differences in these little chunks and how they each have a, quite a different gesture. And I feel like they're um, it's a little too messy the way you're doing it. I feel like that's low, that's coming up. And then we've got our, our gradient up here. So that's me critiquing the sculptural content, but that's also me sort of trying to teach you what matters. What matters? That's what matters. All that uh, the technique stuff and the rendering. I'm sure you. I'm sure all of you guys are going to do great at that. At that stuff. That is the easy part. That's the easy part. The hard part is what I, is this? Everything I'm drawing right here. That's the hard part. So um, yeah, nice work, Sam. You're definitely making progress. Keep thinking sculpturally, and also like think about um, 
think about what these the, the what what the actual forms look like like what is the character of these forms right okay okay i can't do any more drawing i just need to give overall thoughts uh just way over today um this is elisa uh very 3d very 3d and these are getting pretty good too um i would just say that um, like I've shown before, don't let everything get to the even amount of roundness. We don't want it to be like a man made of marshmallows, right? So don't, um, what I want you to do is, I want you to carve the forms out more and shape them more. So again, like if you're if you're thinking like a sculptor, your sculptor is, your sculpture, although working in so many ways is too inflated, it's too balloony. So start trying to find the difference. Not everything has the same roundness, right? It could be, more of a corner and it could be somewhere in between. It could be round and then curves out like this, but you're doing it like that. So you are um, you need to describe the differences in the form better, but overall, great. Definitely, uh, you're definitely thinking the way you're supposed to be. Brenda, yeah, these are getting way more 3D. These are getting way more 3D. Look at this. Wow, that's good. Um, you know, it could be a little more naturalistic for sure. So you could, uh, it could be a little more well-observed, I guess, but you're definitely thinking more three-dimensionally, which is good. And uh, yeah, I think you had the right idea on these. Your proportions are getting a little wacky sometimes. Here, pretty good. Um, pretty good. I, I think that, uh, yeah, I mean, the mouth, you know, look, you're, you're tilting it this way, but the only way, unless you have a severe underbite, the only way it would be tilting that way is if it was an upshot, but this looks like a downshot. So I think you might be getting a little confused in some of these areas. Do that egg and do the ellipse and really make sure everything is like feeling like it's coming from the same direction. Um, this, if you carve that out a bit hard, this would be like a very gaunt person, very gaunt person. Maybe that's what the reference looked like, but just know you could be a little more generous and round with that if you don't want it to look like they're starving. And remember the actual cheekbone inserts down here. So yeah, that can happen, but that's temporalis. This is the way the cheekbone goes. I want to feel that. I don't ever want to feel like you, you missed that. Thank you, Brenda. Good job. Okay, uh, Carolina, super 3D. A lot of people really get in 3D. These constructions are looking good too. Um, yeah, I mean, you're, you're, do, you're doing the right thing here. I think um, some of the secondary forms are probably getting to be a bit exaggerated relative to the big forms. So you're modeling all these secondary forms really nicely, but they are a bit generic. Like these are just looking like caterpillars or something. Um, and it, it is a little bit coming at the expense of the big, big forms. So just, just try to like get um, a little bit more of the, uh, of what the sense is of the, the larger forms, a little more characteristic before you start modeling all the parts. So it looks like you may be slightly jumping Maybe didn't jump the gun, but the primary forms could have been more on model before you moved into the secondary forms. And try to avoid repeating yourself again and again. If you repeat yourself too much with that same language, it it um it doesn't look as strong. Try to find find how that form and that form are different, not how they're similar. Nice job, Carolina. Nella, Mila. Okay, it you're sort of stuck in between 2D and 3D. You know, you're stuck. So on the one hand, oh, that feels really 3D, that feels 3D. And then on the other hand, you're copying in these little areas. And then you're like, oh yeah, look, you're, you're, you're making these feel 3D, but it's on a flat plane. So your primary forms are too flat. Um, and secondary forms are getting better, but primary forms need to be more 3D. So what do I mean by primary? Well, I mean, what I'm drawing. So basically what I'm saying is the stuff that is at the stuff that is at this level of complexity that I'm drawing here, all that stuff needs to be uh, more careful, more accurate, more on model. What I'm seeing here is that that stuff's a bit off. That stuff is a bit off and then or it's just, it's like, it's, it's just a little bit too, it's too simple. It's like too much like a balloon here. And then you're going in and putting in all these like secondary forms. And because 
like for example, you're putting in this little part and they're really well observed and then there's this little part, but overall, right? Oh, let's talk about the mouth, just as an example. I feel like the first drawing was too sloppy. It didn't do a good job of explaining it. So you got this little section and this little section and this little section, all you're doing a really nice job there, but look, you're missing the big idea. What's the big idea? It's got this big mustache and this whole thing is like an underplane, right? So that underplane is more important than those little forms, right? And then um, this chin is here, but then there's a whole double chin under here. It's very big and very full and very round. So you've missed that underplane. So it looks to me like a little bit you're getting into the little forms the way Glenn does, and you're missing a lot of the big forms. So I need you to zoom out a little bit. This is too linear. It's too linear here. You're literally drawing little lips here, right? You know, more time on the structure. Don't draw hair. Don't try individual little lines for the hair. You gotta get the structures better. You know, that doesn't look like Rajiv. That doesn't look like Rajiv. That kind of looks like Rajiv, kind of, but look, you have all face and there's no cranium. And then that kind of looks like Rajiv. So you're you're too off model. Keep keep dialing that in, Nila. Wow, somebody chose the Leonardo. It's a tough one. Pretty good, I think. It feels a bit copied. Feels a bit copied. Um, so what do I mean by that? Well, I mean I don't I don't. This definitely has a roundness in Leonardo's. Yours feels flat. Um, this, I don't, I don't feel the turn of plane here, which I feel in Leonardo's. I don't feel in yours. And uh, getting the wrong angles for the beard. Oh, the way you're turning the planes is incorrect. It's not the right place. And then he's really tucking these lines in, and I feel like you're letting them inflate a little too much. So, um, I mean, obviously very careful, nice rendering. It just has a flat kind of copied feel. And we want to, uh, I mean, I think the most three-dimensional thing you did is the nose, right? But it's just too vague. So where you're ending these rendering lines, it's just too vague. You're not like, you're not carving out a shape as carefully as he is and as specifically as he is. And, and um, because of that, because of that, you're just sort of like doing this. And because of that, it, it doesn't, it feels less three-dimensional, less characteristic. Also, um, I think you need to get this, you gotta push that down. And then this needs to be, look, this is actually a down plane here, right? So separating more of the planes, it, it, it's a really nice sensitive copy. It's just, it's just a little too flat is the problem. And I mean, these are getting better, but it's pretty obvious that besides the eye sockets and the bottom of the nose, you're sort of not quite clear on what a lot of the other forms are. So I think you need to practice. I think you need to practice more of these other forms. And look, low hanging fruit. You missed it, low hanging fruit. I feel like there's low hanging fruit that you're missing with these ellipses. You, I mean, I can kind of see some evidence of them, but you're really, you're really often, um, this, let's say this is even. I mean, just getting the ellipses right will help you a lot here, look. And if the ellipses are there, that's not where the actual tip of the nose, the nose has to come out, right? You see what I mean? But more, Get more of the ellipse in there. That said, I mean, there's a lot of really nice things. I'm sure you learned a lot doing this. I don't want to, I'm just trying to go fast. Oh, this is pretty, I'm trying to go fast, but it just looks a bit, uh, a bit flat, that's all. Okay. I don't think you were supposed to do this one for the master study. This is uh, Priscilla. These are feeling more 3D. Um, I'm feeling it. Pretty good. Pretty good. You can keep improving on them though. More structure, more accuracy. Let's look at this one. Okay, I think the big thing you missed is you're not getting a clear uh, core shadow and that core shadow is pretty important for how it carves up this, this, this uh, carves up the form. And you, you made everything too soft. And so you're missing that opportunity. You're also, um, you're undoing some of that tilt that he put in. You know, this has to be, it has to be more like this. This 
seems to feel like it's really angled more. But see what I mean? By not having that core shadow clear the way uh, Gruz did, you flattened a lot of this out. Nice, nice sensitive though, just like the last one. A lot of sensitivity. I'm sure you learned a lot, but uh, that's that's the major thing that is that's missing. That's making this um, uh, more of an inferior copy than than like how the master did it. So work on that. Nice work, Priscilla. Okay, so this is Gary. Um, so the issue I'm seeing here is is that um, I mean, there's there's a few things. You're over rendering everything. You're going too dark everywhere. Um, and the other thing is that, yeah, it looks to me like you are thinking of an egg, but um, there's not a cranium. So it's not quite the right egg shape. Uh, but you're thinking of an egg, but you are rounding everything out. So you're missing where the form is a little more um, structured with corners. You're missing that. And you're turning everything in. You're, you're basically missing too many corners is what you're doing. So we need to find the areas where these round forms become straighter relatively and flatter relatively. You need to find that. And until you do, it, it just has like this melted look, right? I mean, there's some accuracy things too. So try to uh, try to get more sensitive and find more of these corners. And um, there's also a proportion thing, like, yeah. Look, let's just let's just do real quick. Let's just do. Right, I'm pretty much out of time here. This is shorter. So, just try to get this. It's actually, I think your teacher may be coming out a little too far. Just try to get this this part of it feeling a bit more um, with how low your mouth is. It's way too low. It's got to come up. Try to get this part feeling more accurate. Just this basic, it's the basic, basic, basic stuff, you know, like well, almost like Glenn's egg or watermelon before he carves it up. Try to get that more accurate before you get into everything. And then just take it easy on the tones. You're going too dark. You're going too dark in your half tones. Say, sorry. Okay. It just feels, it just, it doesn't feel like the like the technique we're doing here. It feels very graphic. It feels very graphic. And I think you're one of the students who has experience, but I just don't feel like you're you're not deprogramming it enough. You're not willing to do Glenn's method. You're trying to like do it the way you do it and just improve it a little bit. And the result is um, flat drawing. It's flat. Look, it's like an outline. This is what it looks like. Is flat, right? And the other side effect is you get the tilt and the angles and a lot of the gesture and the overall feeling is not correct. So until you start using Glenn's method and use his tools, I don't know how much I can help you. Um, that probably sounded really grumpy. Look, gesture. Come around, right? The wrong angle on the nose and the wrong size. You know, tilt it down towards us more. The eyes are very flat. These need to feel round. And yeah, there's different parts underneath it, but overall, it needs to feel, it needs to feel round. Yes, we've got gaunt cheeks. But the nose actually needs to move over here. This is all very soft. Look, it's like you just, um, you're, you're not seeing the gesture. So the Vilpu approach is not a technique. It's not a technique. It's, it's, um, it's more of a, it's more of a, a way. Look, look at, look at how they're like, there's no gesture in the mustache. It's more of a, Look, the most important thing that you should be getting out of this, and maybe maybe I'm being harsh on you, and maybe you really are trying to do it and you're just struggling. But the problem is you're not going to be able to combine this flat drawing technique with what is essentially a sculptural drawing technique. That's the most important thing about it. 
So um, I feel like you're trying to pick up a little thing here or there, but you're not willing to stop drawing so uh, flat and so graphically, right? And so it's just, it has a, even just taking like the lines you have, it's like, it has a, um, like there, there's no, look, this head is, is tipping towards us, right? So look, the ears are higher. The ears are high, and there's all, I mean, there's also a distortion. So these features are, are bigger, but overall, there needs to be a little bit of a tip here. It needs to be a little bit of that tip. Now, because this is larger because of the photography, right? This gets enlarged. That effect is, it's more subtle. It's a little harder to see. And he's gonna have long lobes because he's an older person, right? And so that's also gonna affect it. But you actually, that slight, look, these are the two, the two big things. It needs to be more this way and you've made it straight on. You've made it straight. It needs to be tilted more this way. It needs to have a slight down tilt towards us and you've made it flat. Those are two things that come from, from the graphic, um, comes from working graphically. Those are two things that come from working graphically is you put things right in the middle. Look, that's what you did here, right in the middle where it should be like this. And look at, look, look at how, look at how we're looking down at the nose. Look at how we're looking down at this lip and maybe like probably the eye line I say would be like there maybe. So it's not as pronounced here on the upper thing, but it's like, you have to do the block ends the way we talked about. Um, if you are gonna keep working this way, um, you can submit for credit, but I'm not gonna critique them anymore. I'm not gonna critique them because you're giving me a flat graphic drawing. And the only way to improve this is to stop drawing this way and to start thinking more three-dimensional. This is just a little patchwork of shadow shape. That's all this is. Do you see what I'm saying? You have to, and you have experience, obviously. You have a lot of skill, but you're it's not gonna get you're not gonna be able to get past this as long as you're thinking in terms of copying, copying a graphic shapes. You just look at this. This is just literally you're just copying this in a cool way. Like there's a cool texture to it, but this is never gonna be um, three-dimensional drawing because you're not using three-dimensional thinking. You're thinking graphically. So you're sort of like, I mean, yeah, you can continue to get better and your observation can be better, but you are, um, you're locked, you're locked. And if you really want to get better, you need to start thinking differently and drawing differently from the beginning, from the blocking. Okay. This is uh, near Zar. This looks like another uh, Gruz actually. Okay. So um, a lot of nice, a lot of nice things happening. I think you're, I think you're getting a little too caught up in the shapes. You see, and you're missing out on some of the form. Now he is a good shape designer, so that's happening as well. But um, like one thing I'd like to see is, look, that these just look like copied lines a little bit. We're trying to get to the other side. So look, like there's this. And then there's this. We're trying to get to the other side here. So this roundness, we're trying to get on this side and a little too much like you're just copying the lines. And so it could feel more 3D. So even though you know we're it's it's a master study, try to um try to bring your 3D uh, knowledge to it even more than what you're even more than what you're doing. Okay. So from here, then this needs to go down. Okay, that's if you're thinking about what the plane is supposed to do. You'll even be able to get it better from what the master is doing. Look, this is round. That's really what's happening, right? This is dropping and this is dropping. So um, this coming up and around, I feel like this ear is too small and in the wrong place. So um, a little bit more of the structural thinking, that's gonna help you. Um, that's going to help you actually understand what Gruz is doing more than what you are. It's a little bit too much uh, of a linear study, I think. Not that there's no 3D form. Look, this is reflected light. It should be darker. All that needs to be darker. Don't let your reflected lights get as light as anything on the light side. You're doing that. That's a mistake. Um, all we need is to come up. And with the hair, um, you're, it's, you're really sloppy with the hair. 
It might look sloppier than it really is, but he's got a lot of form. He's got a lot of form happening. So I want you to, to think more about where the, the planes change in the hair. Nice work. More 3D. Okay, uh, Gerja, or Ger Gerja, Gerja, okay. Okay, this is more 3D. I appreciate it, but it looks like Frankenstein's monster. So that's a, a side effect of starting to think 3D is it's going to feel very not natural shapes. So you just need to push these shapes closer to what you're seeing. So it really, it's a big accuracy thing. That's also very, I mean, this is just very flat thinking. This is like, um, again, this is like Picasso, right? So that's not the type of drawing, right? It's not enough for you to do that. So this is a completely flat drawing and you just did that. That's not enough. It needs to be more construct constructive. More like this, even though this looks pretty off model. Or more like this, right? Always, always, always. We're thinking 3D. Okay. Um, so, I mean, you made this like completely straight, which is just like you did here, like with Frankenstein's monster. It's actually not, you know, if you look, it's this, it's this, right? But pay attention to the angles of stuff. The other thing is a lot of people made this mistake. It's really, this is really pushing back more like this. Do you see? It's more of an, it's good, it turns, it turns up here, right? Um, I think you should probably see more of the side plane of the nose and I think your nose is probably too small. Okay. Yeah, so the other thing is that um, I'm not getting a sense, again, several people made this mistake, but I'm not getting the sense that this is coming out and then that's coming down. So you need to, in this case, you need to use the mustache. Um, you're flattening it out. So uh, this ridge here, it's really thick and you have to have that for this thing to work. And then this, this should really be turning back. And then um, you're, you're just doodling in, like you're, you're, you're being really lazy with the hair. You know, it's like, it's not just the, it's not just the facial features that count, it's everything that counts. So I want you to try to find, this goes back, I want you to try to find the overall form. And this is already sculpture, so this is as easy as it gets. Um, you, you know, representing real hair is much harder, but I want you to find the actual movement the way the planes change, the um, I want you to find the shapes and the forms of the hair better. I want you to be more careful with it, just like we're doing like the nose, for example. And your mouth is too low. Anyway, oh, that's it. Jeez. Thanks, everyone. Let me know if you uh, the eyes have to come down. That probably means the eyes are too high. If I say the eyes need to come down, I'm saying the position of your eye is too high up. And Thanks. I'm going to end it now.